the same I'm so tired of playing games You don't have to be so hard Just tell me your dreams, the things you like What turns you off, what makes you doubt I'll tell you my deepest secrets I won't let them out Hiding a million different things Waiting for the night time Desi sonka gumnandi monga bafazi bezala Sonka si sexy sonka si flexy si zobusha Shunga into to kala isbubu koloka pa Si zobumnandi stameli langa shkoko paka Ozala shana ozala Sila ubusha bozo trrrra Ozala shana ozala Sila ubusha bozo trrrra Two by two, jumping four by four, ayy. Shawty came with the best friend, got a bench press, but she want more, ayy. What's in store, ayy? Just jump for the floor, ah. Oof, oof, yeah. Tell her, though, who are you, ayy? With the two live crew, ayy. Come on, toy on the rhythm with the ones, make the speakers boom, ayy. Throwing up gang signs, but I make pound signs, pink and blue, ayy. Doing no magic, but I ain't the door who, ayy. Zezi, sonka gumnandi, monga bafazi, bezala. Song is sexy, song is flexy, si zo busha. Shunga into to kala is bobo, koloka pa. Si zo bumna and this time li langa shkoko paka. Ozala, shana ozala. Si za u busha, bozo trrrra. Ozala, shana ozala. Si za u busha, bozo trrrra. Unga spoto zinana, unga slogo tishana, shai kakas. Unga telegi lana, timbezi zinyo washa, na indandat. Kalaskopokolaka. Sizi bumna and this time li langa shkoko paka. Ozala, shana ozala. Sizi ubusha, bozo trrrra. Ozala, shana ozala. Sizi ubusha, bozo trrrra.
o'clock in the club and I can't leave. My sports car outside doing top speeds. You're choosing up and I hope that you choose me. I'll be everything you want plus what you need. No car service, I'm driving. Bucket seats for you when we ride in. And we high all life, we do it. Driving back home 11 at night In the parties but I'm feeling alone All the stars in the midnight sky look pretty Baby you're rolling, can you please come with me Cause I'm tired of the pop life and I need you lights They flashing while I'm driving Don't be afraid of the dark, be careful with stars Not every light is gonna guide you, baby Don't let them rain on your spark Keep it close to your heart All of the pressure's gonna drive you crazy Close your eyes to the madness In the morning it's all gonna vanish Don't be afraid of the dark, be careful with stars Not every light is gonna guide you yeah, when I blow up, I'm a sore high like Peter Pan. In real life, be living all my dreams. If I'm waking up, it's in a foreign land. Whole wrist covered up in ice. Dealership, never asked the price. I hit the molly ball with my dogs. Yeah, I swipe it once without thinking twice. Cause this is what I was made for. Man, I know this what I came for. On a big stage, couple thousand people, and they do whatever I say so. Have chicks that color the rainbow. Yeah, chains on me like Django. Be a long way from my tank low, cause my Tesla charge for them bank rolls. And I'm grinding, money on my mind. And I'm headed to the top, I won't stop until I find it. Write my name in diamonds, but all these lights are blinding. I wonder, is it worth it? Feel like I'm losing my mind. Stars. Not every light is gonna guide you, baby Don't let them rain on your spark Keep it close to your heart All of the pressure's gonna drive you crazy Close your eyes to the madness In the morning it's all gonna vanish Don't be afraid of the dark Be careful with stars Not every light is gonna guide you I blew up, everybody telling me that I'm the man. Same people gave me the finger, they reaching out for me to give a hand. In a different city and my pills came, cause this tour don't happen, I feel pain. And the girl with me says she down for life, she don't even know what's my real name. Just try to get what she came for, and ain't nothing I got safe though. Cause when the money go wild, everybody get a piece, but it's looking like I ain't on the payroll. Got a big house made out of Play-Doh, and a plastic crown for my halo. But still a long way from my tank low, cause my Tesla charge for them bank rolls. And I'm grinding, money on my and I'm headed to the top, I won't stop until I find it Write my name in diamonds, but all these lights are blind And I wonder, is it worth it, feel like I'm losing my mind, yeah, remind me Don't be afraid of the dark, be careful with stars Not every light is gonna guide you, baby Don't let them rain on your spark Keep it close to your heart All of the pressure's gonna drive you crazy Close your eyes to the mask
never make it this far. They hate it, they never believe me. Yeah, I would never drop the ball. I know I make it look easy. Yeah, Mayweather with the defense. I don't care what a critic got to say. I got him picking up the pieces. Got to me, you really playing with your life. I'm about to come and run it all back. I'm the new ever about to snap back. You ain't fitting for it because you all cap like. Hold up. I shoot my shot. Wait, hold up. I'm really about to run this. Go up. You know it's all net when it go up. Ain't got no other plans. You don't need to understand. Hey, we on overtime. You don't need to understand. Hey, you just show them how to do it when you don't know what to say. Tell me how you plan to win if you plan to play the same. Moving fast, already gone. Yeah, but you bringing me back. Try to double cross me, dog. Just let me relax. Stop assuming what we doing. Keep it moving. Play no games with me, I promise I'm too much. Ay, I can never let up even if you had enough. Ay, this ain't for the faint of heart, we always playing rough. I had enough, it ain't luck. I needed a vision, I needed ambition, I needed a mission to be the submission with knowing the mission. I see the collision, the crash of the distance, they coming off track. No, no, on the yes with the motives, don't talk about the show. They all about to see what I mean in the moment. I gotta keep going, I'm shaking the dice and I'm keeping it rolling. They already know. Ain't got no other plans, you don't need to understand. Ay, we on no time, you don't need to understand. Ay, you just show them how to do it when you don't know what to say. Tell me how you plan to win if you plan to play the same. Moving fast. Already gone, yeah, but you bringing me back. Try to double cross me, dog. Uh, just let me relax. Stop assuming what we doing. Uh, keep it moving what we doing. Cause it can get, Cause it can get, Cause it can get, Some people love me, and they don't even know I have a hard time loving myself. Some people judge me, and they don't even know I have a hard time judging myself. Life gets ugly, but I got a paintbrush and paint a pretty smile on myself. Mouth stay shut even when I need help. In too deep in the water, Mike Phelps. Swimming lessons, I still got many unanswered questions. Sick of the anger, sick of depression. Wanna be great, count your blessings. Just give me my salad, you keep the dressing. Cause I'm cream of the crop, he paid the price, I'm worth a lot. He told me go, why would I stop? Rest on my thoughts, jump off the tire, bro. Lilo Brown with the frog splash. Leaps of faith, what I call that. If you hit my line for the old me, when I hang up on you, don't call back. I ain't gonna block my blessings, huh? I'd rather block your number. Life taught me so many lessons, huh? Been down, bad, never under. <gasps> That's breath in my lungs. Some people die young, where I come from. Woke up and gave thanks to father and son. Filled with the spirit, I shine like the sun. Ghost in me, but I ain't haunted. Bad vibes, keep them, don't want it. Cry hard to swallow, doggone it. And you were really never my opponent. I ain't fighting evil, man, they hearts black. They wanted my life, told them back, back. Got an itch for sin, can't scratch that. Keep the truth loaded in the black gap. Just know if I said it, I'm in it, and they gon' take it back. Learn the game brighter than my granddaddy's Cadillac. Young man, oh, so imagine that. Ain't in my control, gotta pray, let them handle that. God hit my line, gave me the play. Roger that, gang torn. All right, you hate like a running back. If you ain't catch everything I said, better run it back. Eating up this beat, break bread. Where your sandwich at, y'all? Hi B, thought I was done. Mm, no, this beat ain't like Kobe. I'm too full. My God, sick old Modi, too cold. I'm skating on beats, froze on with the flow.
such a weirdo. Tattoos from my toes to my earlobes. Was a role model, I never had a hero. I learned how to live through the stereo. Coming from where I come from, the inner field, yo. Everything you see ain't what it appears, though. Everything that I built made that from zero, then added a zero. I am my hero. You couldn't imagine what it's like in my mind. It's beauty and catastrophe at the same time. Remember they laughed at me when it was game time. Then I know that they mad at me. I'm what you can't find. I'm not from the day. I come alive at night. I'm not what you used to. Couldn't recognize that y'all on the ground while I'm taking flight. Yeah, you're welcome to join me. I promise I won't bite. They're never getting in my way And even if I make mistakes I will always see them through Cause I don't wanna play your conscience, prepare for honest, cut off all the nonsense, I'm all in your shock, you wonder who shot you, go call the doctor, boom like the chopper, don't you get chopped up, I'm here to stop you, whoever wants smoke like a roster, break you off proper, they say, they're never getting in my way, and even if I make mistakes, I will always see them through, What's that? cause I don't wanna play your game. Investigators looking for the coping with the narcotic dope ish, making sodas for poets. He had a full white beard. People thought he was Moses. Overdosed it, murdered the whole block because his verses was potent. At that moment, the fool was heartbroken because he pulled out his mic and blasted the speakers wide open. Diagnosed it, found out victims were still Jones and for that moolah ish. So we dug up a bad omen, no emotions. Smudging off opponents, not knowing how them arrows got puffy without Sean Coleman. Meanwhile, his stacks was growing at L. Cats back in his past, he started to outgrow and police. They kept probing with campaigns and slogans, one of them dead or alive. Soon enough, they was hoping at the crime scene. Examining his hemoglobin, see notes embedded in his genetics, they didn't notice him. The plot thickens like gumbo soup. I'm stomping through the muddy waters in my jungle boots. The plot thickens, the plot thickens, the plot thickens, the plot thickens. The plot thickens like gumbo soup. I'm stomping through the muddy waters in my jungle boots. The plot thickens, the plot thickens, the plot thickens. International act radical, not thinking rational, taming these wild animals, blowing out the flammable candle, pulled out the box, made them more incompatible or natural. The way he murdered it so casual, kept stabbing that ish. A witness said he was fanatical, killing the whole avenue with something intangible. Facts that weren't actual, leaked out the dorm on track, it was tactical. Grabbed the apparatus, but he had to do a manual split. The whole avenue with fresh holy mackerel, funerals at the tabernacle. It was drastical, media made it more graphical. More dramatical, like it was something that could happen to you. Street life crime became theatrical, villains became heroes, and youths got adapted to. It was a rap for you after the crack smacked at you, catching you where the felony and enemies would clap at you. The plot thickens like gumbo soup. I'm stomping through the muddy waters in my jungle boots. The plot thickens, the plot thickens, the plot thickens, the plot thickens, the plot thickens like gumbo soup. I'm stomping through the muddy waters in my jungle boots. The plot thickens. The plot thickens, the plot thickens.
plot thickens, the plot thickens, the plot thickens like gumbo soup. I'm starving through the muddy waters in my jungle boots. The plot thickens, the plot thickens, the plot thickens, the plot thickens, the plot thickens like gumbo soup. I'm starving through the muddy waters in my jungle boots. The plot thickens, the plot thickens, the plot thickens, the plot thickens, the plot thickens like gumbo soup. I'm starving through the muddy waters in my jungle boots. Uh, the fast life, the fast living. They see the ambition, they know I'm fast driven. Look, we are not the same, this is not a game. I've been swerving through the city in and out of lanes. Yeah, cause if I see it, then I want it, then you better know I got it. Ain't no watches, I'm about to do the damn thing. I'm an outlaw, you can never catch me. I'm in first place, you can never. These are the moments, only got one life. This is your moment, whether wrong or right. Feel the pain, but I love it, yeah. You know I'm built for it. You ain't gotta ask twice. You ain't buy that fast life. Huh, honey on the dash with the cash like. Huh, you ain't buy that fast life. Huh, big dog status with your stash like. You ain't buy that fast life. Just know 100 dollars is the bag price. You ain't buy that fast life. Six speed, yeah, I'm smashing on the gas, gas, gas.
ASL Pro League is brought to you in part by Intel, ASUS Republic of Gamers, DHL, the United States Air Force, 1XBAT, Monster Energy, and Gaming Malta. Welcome to Stream B, our second day here for Group B. Live from Malta, many players in the sunny shores of Malta. Looks like a small country. Have you been to Malta, Hawker? I have, I have. What did you, what did you discover? What did I discover? Yeah. I, I don't know if I discovered much. I just had a, a good time. It was windier than I thought because it's uh, it's like quite an isolated island, quite far away from uh, Europe. So, you know, it's, it's very windy, at least when I went. That's the main thing that surprised me. Okay, Windy Malta. That's what we've learned from Hawker. Take do with that what you will. Welcome to the show. We've got just the one best of three today for you. And don't worry about this tape. It is covering a stain. I've got this. Um, this is a map that Zool made for Counter Strike. Don't think this is something else. This is a Counter Strike map, which is live by me right now. It's a uh, a Mario course he made, which is pretty hard, man. It took me hours to actually do a run without getting completely bodied by the map. I'll even show you what happens if you do a run on this map. I can just die in the background. Watch this. <laughs> Boom. There we go. Oh. Just like that, you get utterly wrecked. It's not easy to do this. But anyway. We're not here to uh, play. Oh, I died again. Never mind. We're not here to play, to play platform games. We are here to play some counters. Right, let's have a look at the bracket and see where things stand. This is the historical bracket. This is where things stood yesterday before our action began. But let's see how things progress. And they progress pretty damn quickly. There is one standout result here, though, Hawker. Yeah, we had that MIBR win over Mouse, a big 2-1 for them, which I'm sure they will be delighted with. And we currently have that heroic big game live, actually. Big were doing pretty well in that matchup. So maybe another upset on the horizon. Big can pull through and MIBR ends also will be played later on. In that mid bracket, though, we turn our attention to Monty Rooster. That one was played earlier today, and Rooster did show us a bit of that potential. That was a, a pretty close series between those two. Yeah, they managed to pick up a map, which is great as well, especially after their first match in this bracket. But they will be heading to lower areas if Monty will try to press forward. They'll press forward for the time being, at the very least, no pun intended. So a 2 1 for Monty over Rooster. We've got Mal's and Evil Geniuses on the other side. Rooster await. Maybe many challenges, or perhaps they'll be in for an early bath as well. But they'll have to see how the action continues to find that he'll be joining them in that lower bracket. So again, we've had a lot of action in the few days we've had here in this uh, Group B, and there's more to come. Again, just the one game on the B stream today, which is going to be Maus trying to stand back up after getting knocked early by MIBR yesterday. Yeah, I think that's uh, a really important Match up for them just to, to bounce back in because we heard people yesterday, Cadian specifically, saying he had Mauser's basically certain to go through. So now that they're down in the mid bracket, maybe some concerns for them in this one. It is going to be a Mauser lineup we take a look at going up against EG, who actually played two very close maps against Ents yesterday. So maybe EG are going to be more competitive than some people were expecting here in this group. Yeah, lots of questions coming into this one. They always say styles make fights. We'll see how these two teams match up with each other once they get onto the server. But we want to see an EG who are growing, who are improving. You know, they've been uh, down in, in the doldrum for quite a while now, but perhaps this newest roster can make some progress. Rockmatic used to be a star player and I'd love to see him be enabled to be a star player once again with a, a rising EG. That would be fantastic. So. Yeah, you know, he, he was uh, one of the best players in the North America, one of the biggest names, but it's not really finding that match across the board, this EG organization 
in recent rosters. And of course, they've got some young players on the team as well who are looking to make their names alongside Automatic. And you'll need help if they are to rise once again. Yeah, absolutely. I think Automatic has been a solid player on this team for a long time. That just needs the uh, support around him. And I'd say that Junior has been pretty good since rejoining onto this EG roster. I think he can be a, a good AWPer, but he just needs that confidence behind him. He's someone who really likes to take a lot of fights. It's a high-risk style of AWPing, but one that can be good and, and can sometimes go badly. So keeping an eye on him and also Hex, who had a, a pretty good opening game here at Pro League. Let's turn attention to Mouse though, because they did not start off the way they wanted to against MIBR. They took the loss. I still think Frozen was playing pretty well, doing what he does. Forgy definitely had his moments. It, it wasn't a disaster for Mouse, but it's still a, a frustrating loss for them, because even though they didn't play terribly, they should be beating MIBR pretty much every time. Yeah, they will certainly feel like they will have a lot more name value and reputation to uphold. But you have to give credit to MIBR for their performance yesterday because they put in some really nice work indeed. Like you could see how hard they had worked to get to where they were. So all credit due, but of course people will still think, oh, Mouse should have won and they lost. And that will be enough for them. We'll see if they can improve things. Definitely don't want to see Mouse in a, in a, in a lower bracket immediately. That would be a veritable, a veritable disaster for the squad. So let's see if they, they can turn things around today. And I think, you know, yesterday they were they were going into that one as a heavy favorite. We could see that MIBR worked hard. You'd hope that EG are working hard with, um, again, the the decline that they have had over recent years at this point, it feels like. So let's see if they can show us as much as MIBR did yesterday. Again, I think it was um, like a, a, just a quick snapshot, obviously, because MIBR are not the match today. But uh, I, I think I think it was quite clear that they had done a lot of work to, to improve as a team. And I'm just, maybe we can draw a little bit of comparisons between them and, and EG once we get into things here. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like that EG have, I think this, the players they've got now, like uh, are probably some of the better players you could get if you're looking to make a, a sort of second or, or third best NA team. So I, I'm sure they're happy with that. I think it was a big shame for them that they weren't able to get a liege and that a liege went to complexity, but they're making the most with the, the players that they have. And I, I definitely think there is potential on this roster. So hoping we can see that from EG. I think really though, on the mouse side, You've got to be watching for Frozen again. Oftentimes, happy to play very aggressive. But he also will take some lurking spots now on this team. He's been giving a lot of freedom to basically play his favorite spots wherever he wants. And you normally see that in the numbers. And then I guess also a bit of a question for Shuhei. We want to see his in-game leading here on this team. He's someone who's highly touted as an up-and-coming leader. But you've got to start getting results on the board. And that, that's something that's going to have to come through here for Mouse. And surely this is the sort of game where they expect to do that. Yeah, I would expect them to bounce back. And we, we had a precursor to that previous match uh, yesterday with MIBR, with the interview we did with Kadian earlier on, where he was saying, look out for MIBR. These guys have put in some work. So so uh, I think that has to be noted. It has to be considered. We haven't heard those words from uh, regarding EG just yet. Let's have a look at the veto and see the landscape these teams will be playing on. But indeed, uh, I, I think this has to be where Mao's bounce back. They, they lost to a good MIBR yesterday. Very curious to see what the current measure of EG is. So Ancient Inferno and Nuke VR series. Yeah, Ancient picks there by EG. We obviously had these teams playing in BO3s yesterday. EG actually picked Mirage last time round, but that did not go well for them against Ents. So they go for the Ancient instead. And their mouths sticking with that Inferno that was very strong for them yesterday. They beat MIBR 67 on that map. So clearly Mao's keeping Inferno as their strength. And then Nuke is the decider. Listen, that's a map that EG played Ents very close on. They took Ents to all 30 rounds in regulation. So looks like a map that EG have put some time into. And if they can take it there, maybe a chance to compete against this Mao's line. Yeah, I'm very interested to see. I do like the the ancient pick because of the this, this quite simply the level of aggression that is required to hold things down there. I think that's a good indicator for EG. But of course, performing on the server itself will be a different story. I still think, like with the 
with the money the org clearly has, you know, there are certain people I feel like they could get in the back to give the team a structure. So I will be looking at what kind of structure they have as we get into this one. You can see them physically preparing. So I think it is just around the corner. Again, Mao's who weren't shy to be aggressive yesterday versus MIBR, despite their loss, will be looking for revenge. I think EG might be their pinata for this series. Let's see how Ancient goes then as we begin our series here on Stream B. EG starting on that T side. No kits for Mouse. Shuhei will have a bit of util. Drop some dullies to exertion, it looks like, and he's using them well immediately. That's very nice indeed. Three straight away in that pistol for exertion. No answer for EG whatsoever. The junior is dropped. Wow, that would have been super free if he had taken all five there. George has got much to do, and Torji will get that last one. That was. That fourth kill was a bit bizarre. It was almost like he didn't know he was there. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there. That was really weird. Yeah, what a start, though, for Exertion. Damn, these duelies. Up close and personal in and around the cave. No one can trade him. And peeks out even at long distance. Can't quite transfer at the end, but it's all good. Those duelies delivering in the cave. You see a lot of those on Ancient. I feel like you need the close range duelies for the pistol round. Exertion showing us just how good they can be. It's now the locks coming out for EG. Seeing a lot of full saves in these second rounds recently. It should be light work for Mal's here. I've seen Maus be in pretty good form online for this event. But prior to that, their previous tournament was Cologne. Took a couple of losses there against Astralis and Vitality, but loss against MIBR, unexpected. It's a bit awkward for Exertion, only able to find one kill with the M4. His teammates look like they will clean up the mess. Automatics oh, no. arms, not quite long enough. Can't pick up that gun, so only at one man lost for Mouse. No biggie as they go into round number three. Fairly clean start so far, just those two kills for George for EG. But there is work to be done. See what they have to offer on this T side, then they'll have the util instant smoke, presumably for that mid position. Indeed, it will be nothing on toward there. And a 0-2-3 start for Maus as Frozen makes his way towards Donut. Are EG going to walk straight into the A-bomb site? Some jiggles from Warco. Nothing doing. In fact, we'll realize that uh, it's been a very prompt entry into that AIM area. They've got plenty of util for the retake though, Mal, so they're going to have to wait out these smokes for the time being. Execute here from EG, but do Mouse want to fight forward? They try to, but the flash doesn't dissuade George from getting that kill. It's going to allow the bomb to be planted, and Mouse still trying to move in. Shuhei so blind, though. George getting all the kills on board for EG. Still trying to fight back here, but doesn't look likely they're going to get too many fights. Torji can't make the most of his opportunity, and those AKs wreaking havoc all over that A bomb site. EG will get their first round on the board. Wonder if that's um, the demo watching straight to the A bomb site. No messing about. Very, very quick indeed. So a promising start for EG in the first buy round. Let's see how, what the depth looks like. Good start, though. Yeah. See if they can build on that. Well, to be expensive as well for the CT side. Burn that money immediately. Four mouse can get too far off the races. One to two. Evil Genius's POV. 
The French guns are out for Mars. Never a good sign. Yet to see what the approach is like from Mars going forward at a site vulnerable in the previous rounds. They were playing pretty passively. As we pointed out at the start of the round, no one on A. So this time, Yimpat will play there from the start. So they don't want to fight mid as aggressively, though, on the Mal's side. So a lot of map control there for EG. Looks like Automatic will be the man tasked with playing solo in and around top mid. Seeing if he could craft an opening, maybe cut off some rotations. EG look pretty set on going towards this A site again. Ext is just holding this B control. Bomb is back over towards A, grouped up, and Hex baited in there. Now they might have to pull the trigger on this A play. The numbers, but Frozen got the angle and the great timing as well. He's made this doable. That's turned around. The numbers in Mauser's favor. Three on two as EG continue pursuing A. Wondering who else might be lurking. This will buy time for Maus to gradually rotate as both teams have a limited information. 40 seconds remain for EG. Last day, you till then. Save for the flash on Junior, but he's got no one to flash. Got the flash in anyway. Nice angle for him. He's the big flash from Maus. 1v2 of 28 seconds. To consider his options here. To create some space. Does he commit to this bomb plant? He's going to, and he's going to take one in the face immediately from Torji. Two surviving the round from Maus, stopping the momentum of EG. Good work there. From Mouse, EG trying again towards A, and again they got that first kill on towards Yimpat. They found that in a to back round now, but this time Mouse able to rotate over and recover effectively. You saw that shift in setup. They had a more proactive hold towards that A bomb site. We helped them. Now it's EG's turn to have a bit of a dodgy buy. A couple of players forced onto weakened weapons. Also means Maus have that full utility again. So now they can compete for mid control more. Flash forces Torji back though, so he can't help Frozen. Spamming through the smoke, nothing really doing there. It's a favorable trade there for EG. Really is, and they've got a, lots of util for later on also. Good exertion, Kentu eating a huge flash, but still delivering and able to disengage. That's a very important kill. That's the bomb site lost otherwise, and it could still be. Automatic is creeping. Doesn't know how many players are on this bomb site though, and the number is increasing. So there is some cover for exertion. Will he be cognizant of the angles behind him? Especially once he sees a T. How deep does automatic go? Torji swinging out. Their attention definitely being drawn towards that ramp. There's a smoke up, and there's automatic to activate. Torji's still here though, but he's lost his position behind the smoke. He goes. Let's give Georgia a haircut there. 2 on 3 for Maus. Bomb's about to get planted. In fact, still lurking in mid, looking for a search kill. Tricky to go for this one. I think Maus might have realized that. Still hanging around to see if EG overextend, but no real need for EG to. And a decent variety shown by EG in some of these early T side rounds. This time able to take the mid control, or even though they. Get the mid control, they end up back towards B in this one. So clearly getting that mid control, helping EG flex their options on this T side. It's a really promising sign for EG here. This is a map that has been kind to them in recent months. EG have won it the three times they've played it. Oh, but that is all against regional competition. See that flash doing a lot of work there. Denied the setup that Maus had. Another good flash onto Exertion. He was somehow able to get the kill. He wasn't able to get back to safety with Automatic locking him in. That is a fairly early timeout taken here by Maus to talk things through. Money's being kept scrappy for the time being, which is always something that makes for entertaining Counter-Strike. Maybe they'll have added focus after the narrow loss yesterday in their best of three. Let's see what they're able to do. Frozen definitely wins in the closest monitor department, at least for the Mao's side. Let's have a look at EG later. 
That mid smoke is a constant. CTs will go through it anyway. But Frozen's at the back actually with the MP9, so this is a very awkward round for Mouse. Suppose they're looking to play the longer rounds and hold Red Room in general. EG back to A once again. Bomb is in tow. Big indicator. Obviously, three people committed to long. Here's another one. And once more, it is a fast emergence with the pop flash as well. But Torji will have some free kills there. There's no warp here for Mouse. Maybe an option to swing dry with those numbers, but they'll telegraph their intentions and Mouse will punish them for it. Not as much utility this time, it seemed, from EG to deny Torji that. He swung out and got a nice lineup. Now EG will try and make the play into the mid round, but it's actually Mao's remaining active. This counter aggression on mid could be great for them. Yimpak takes down two. It's a clean sweep for Mao's. The mishmash of a buy doesn't matter. They make it work with just the two rifles, the two M4s that they had. They get all the kills between them. Nice kills from Torji. Again, not really responding to the flash he saw earlier. And then it is pedestrian for him to find two kills on that bomb site. TG will have to do something more thorough if they are to test that later on. Of course, an AWP might help. But for now, it's going to be Tech 9s and Max 10s. This is a jumble sale by or a thrift store, as the Americans might say. Looking very rough indeed, but look how close they are already to that bomb site. This is a perfect map for this kind of fight. Hex moving through with the Max 10. He's great space at the very least, but can his teammates follow up on that? Apparently they can't. Session Torji and Shuhei coming in smoothly, confidently, calmly clearing that B bomb site. The remainder of VG find themselves behind the choke point and behind the smoke. He's not even looking the right way. Junior caught in the back. Didn't expect Exertion to go even further forward. And the wall bang will close it. Another clean round for Maus. I think finally some money being built up by one of these teams. It's that CT side of Maus that looks like it will be able to get a good foothold here. See the pace being relied upon. Banding not doing enough to deny Maus from still getting kills. They're getting kills while blind, which is really helping slow down the explosive play that EG went for there. When you don't go for the smokes, if those flashes betray you, they still get the kills on towards you. It's just so hard to actually breach the bomb site. So a timeout taken by EG, but I don't fancy their chances in this upcoming round. Got to be a hard eco hit. Yeah, looking at the, the first T round they won and the pace at which they simply emerged into the A bomb site, I thought there are more questions to answer about how consistent they can be with the T-Rounds in this half, and I'm still waiting for that to be answered. We saw how Mao's dealt with it the last time. So now the, the good stuff has gone bad for EG. Question of depth remains. We asked the same question of EG, which is why I draw comparisons, sorry, of MIBR yesterday, which is why I draw comparisons between the two squads. See what indicators we have of progress. Oh dear. How is Shuhei on to find some frags? I was almost going to say that worked out okay for him, but it indeed has not. One for one versus a Glock, not ideal. But the position is held by Maus. with a warning shot. Should line these two up. Solid spray. Exertion. He's just spotting down on the side of that smoke. He's really going for it. You want the eco kills. You always want them. Looks like Torji be the man to get one alongside Exertion, who's had a great start to this game. 10 and 4 now. Hasn't been in his best form in the last few months. Uh, definitely delivering here, and that is a good sign for Maus in this series. Amusingly awkward for Shuhei. Sentry going in the wrong direction. Didn't want to lose his angle and the cover for his teammates in the setup, so forward he went. Wasn't too expensive though for the squad. 6 2 2 as the rifles come out once again. Hex sacrificing an AK for a Gilil in order to have the U tilt. For the team execute, and what execute will that be? No one lurking towards long A on this occasion for EG. 
George is still in T-Sport, presumably for further grenades into mid. He'll soon be deploying a... No, he started to rotate. He had a smoke in his hand earlier on. Can certainly flash for your teammates there to swing into mid as well. But as we can see, Mouse has gone very aggressive as far as mid is concerned. And maybe this will thwart the initial intentions for EG. That should be a, a good chance to deny early. And EG have found a bit of success in prior rounds when they've got that mid control and made the most of it. Instead, this time they'll group up to A early. It's not that anchor of Yimpat here this time, though. It's the Orb of Torji. So they need to have re nades ready. Yimpat's got to kill elsewhere. So now they should be aware it might be an Orb on this bomb site. It's not going to matter, though. Torji plays so far forward. He drops the bomb early. That really makes things difficult here for EG. Big info for the team. Chuhei deals with the Lurker in Hex now and clears the B bomb site. So Mouse have all the information. And EG. They could swing through a smoke, but that would be a suicidal play. How much choice do they have there? What remains of them anyway? Walko and Junior. Things are only going to get rougher. Well, Torshi, that felt like an Eon, but it's all fine. Five on two for them. They've got plenty of angles. The bomb site is surrounded. Exertion coming in from the back. And EG still looking for their first go. Instant trades. And Junior just waits for them to come now. So many angles to cover. Made a costly. It was a five on two, and the Mouse will finish with two standing only, but they are leading by five. Torji survived quite a while there, made sure the rotates could arrive. He actually survived the whole round in the end, despite being that initial point of contact on the A side of the map. So very well done. The impact this time playing a slightly more active role, and it feels like Impact's finding a, a bit of success when he's making those aggressive moves on mid. We'll see if that's something that's going to continue. That was the final shot from Torji there, having to play around the site. Now with his pistols again, and oh, Walko chunked so low. Oh. This is getting very, very weird indeed. Everybody standing for EG. Hopping into the bomb site with some nice weapons as well. There is an incendiary. There's some utility which could do some damage. If only two of these players have Kevlar. Now they've got to try and take some of these weapons away. If they can stay alive. That's a big one. Walko so close with the AWP. That could be a game changer for Miles as that util starts to rock. Got a smoke to deal with one of these choke points as well. And a little time on that clock. Moving in is Yimfad into a sandwich. He's ready for the 180 though. And now Frozen has got two more to fight. Gets this bell run. Continuation spray. They will lose the round anyway. Chaos prevailing for EG. So again, that's an important round. Doesn't quite break the money for Mouse. You can see Frozen's got 11k. And there are still plenty of catching up for them to do. So while this one was something, what can they do to... Uh, like, you can't... This is not a round you can replicate to win more rounds. Need to outplay Mouse. In a, in a more standard round to come. The question for me is, can they do that? See Junior having some good performances. That mid control again going away in Mouse though. Torji will take out Junior as soon as I say his name. Oh, and the timing from Shuhei. Perfect on the spray. Takes down Hex entirely. Hulko will do what he can. It's uh, not going to be easy here for EG to come back into this round at this point. Very, very tricky to see a road back. George and Walko have much to do. Dershin repositioning. Changing the formation just to make things even more difficult. Frozen closing the net from the back as well. George will get wrecked immediately for that grenade. Nothing's for free versus Mouse. Didn't take too much stock from their loss yesterday. Again, you've got to give credit to MIBR for hard work paying off. Walko may soon be put out of his misery. There's a big flash for him. Down he goes. Just a one kill that time. That'll help Mouse stabilize as they head towards half time. Very solid for Mouse. No complaints. And even that one round they lose is maybe a misunderstanding of the economy that their opponents had. I'm not sure. 
We saw Shuei playing so close. They're fighting for Cave against the Pistols. Goes back to the guns, and it's pretty convincing again from Mouse. Wouldn't mind EG putting more emphasis into mid again and just trying to fully take that early in the round. Feels like that has been a, a, a fair way they can find success. But at the same time, Mal's are definitely fighting it more aggressively now. So maybe you do need to wait until the early utility runs dry and then you can try and take the mid control. Either way, that T side not looking good right now on the EG front. And the only upside is, I mean, the mouse don't have much money. So maybe if you can somehow win a round or two, put a streak together here at the end of the half. Uh, this round, not looking like their best chance of that. Only the one primary weapon, that AK, out in the hands of Jude. I had a few internet sound issues the last few rounds. But uh, I think we solved them now between Hawker and I. Changing program in the background. Who's going to take the bullet for the president? Protect the VIP. It's oil rig. Oh, man. The VIP goes down immediately. Great target selection by Torji. They will minimize the damage. Currently nil. Oh, there's something for Walker. He's got a minute 15. He could have a miracle round. Then again, he could not. Not today. I five from Frozen. What's going on there? Yeah, they, they, okay. they look happy enough. Focus. Looking, looking good. I mean, this is what you want to see out of Mouse, though. EG's map pick. They come in. They look very strong on their CT side. This is a team we were expecting to make it through this group fairly comfortably. They've already found themselves down in this mid bracket. Frozen could get this line up. They're trying to take mid control again. Frozen so blind. It works out for EG. The flash is on point again for them. This is another good chance at a round win. Chain flashes into mid are so powerful on Ancient. Just when he thought it was safe to start peeking again. Nope, another flash and one more. No help to be had for Bowser in mid. EG showing they're not done with this half just yet as far as rounds accrued. Holding position in mid for the time being. We can see Shuhei is creeping. Torji running distraction in the meantime from the turn up position. The transfer is it never Shuhei. 2v3 key EG keep their advantages then. Remainder towards A as that bomb heads towards B. Walko's in a very good position to cut them off. So hard to get back in here. And there maybe could be some economy questions for Mouse. No, it's late in the half. They have money. I think it probably is still worth saving, especially when you have that AWP. AK for Yimpat as well could prove valuable going forward. So EG with a fourth round. As you said, I, I like they went back to those chain flashes on mid. We've seen Mouse try and fight pretty aggressively in that mid position in, in a few recent rounds now. And proving that they can use those flashes to take mid control is going to be really helpful to make Miles second test if they want to go so aggressively in that mid position. Because you lose those trades early, you put yourself in such a bad spot to try and respond. TEG able to convert their fourth round there. Flash. And he's like, he, he saw for like 0 0.1 seconds. Just as it's fading, another flash came through. That was crazy. So patient as well. Wasn't given what he was looking for, though. And something else entirely. At least break towards Dona and from mid from EG as they'll get even more aggressive in that mid position. In response this time as Frozen. Could have taken more damage from that grenade, but he's okay. Shuhei, on the other hand, getting lit up to some degree will be forced away the aggressive towards the end of the first half. This time, Mouse are playing a little more passively. I like this adjustment from Mouse. I think it's not a bad idea to just make EG prove they can run a late round play and have a successful execute onto one of these bomb sites. 
also leave yourself the option, if you are Mal's, for some mid-round aggression. See, Torji is already somewhat deep towards B. Some rifle has joined him. He could maybe push further. Back, he's actually inching forward himself. Torji wants all the info right now. He's going to see that B is clear, and this is massive info. You can see the rotate happening already. That is a devastating smoke grenade. We've got four people standing around in that mid position, including the bomb. A caterpillar of key players with a big headshot. That's important, but there's still so much work to be done. Assertion trying to reposition. That's so walking for the mouse. Had position, but they've lost all of it now. How EG have made this work is beyond me. That was such a dire situation for them. That entry through into Red Room was so, so important. Big headshot coming in there. Yeah, that's crazy. I think Mal started to panic slightly once Shuhei went down at that Red Room area because they thought, oh no, B is wide open. Maybe we need to have that at least in the back of our minds. And then EG are just able to push through the smoke and get another kill. Crazy work there to be able to pull that one off because Mal's had all the info. They had the hard read. Somehow, EG, just by winning that first fight, caused enough chaos that Mouse's crossfires get completely dismantled. Oh, that's a big round from EG. Now they've got a very real chance at six rounds at the half. That would make this game much more doable here. Lazarus pit for EG towards the end. I'm interested. It's not been easy versus Maus. Those mid plays have been quite important in the last few rounds. Very hard to fight against. And we see detail in those executes, in those chain flashes. Something we did mention before this game started. What kind of attention to detail will we see from EG? That was so key as well. Answering and overcoming adversity with that smoke and donut, they had to force the issue all the way through mid, and that's exactly what they did. Promising from EG. Four plays heading towards B. Will this be another fast one, or is this just aggressive map control at the start? No flick for you, says Torji. Looking for a second one, still standing. Walko not shy to go for these angles, and he'll deliver the goods. Hey, some flashbangs again. Those chain flashes from George. They take new angles. They've got new flashes. Down go Mouse. Should be the B bomb site here. Unless Exertion can step up. They don't have the flashes to help him, but the fights are going the way of Mouse. And Exertion is sneaking in. They have no idea. He snuck all the way onto the site. Bomb plant denied. And Hex has three to find. The wrap round not successful. Now they know where he is. He's got a gargantuan task on his hands here. One minute to do it. That'll certainly kill some time, though. Got a smoke of his own. Could stick it in a choke point. Not easy to find that timing, though. Put a lurk smoke out. Land close to the bomb. 36 seconds to find three. Keep those trade fraggers, but they will find him first. Ten and a half time for Mouse. Have EG done enough with those late rounds? Let's find out after this.
chalkboard. Hit you harder than the darts on a dartboard. Damn it, man, I'm creepy like Candyman in a pair of hammer pants with a hammer in his hand. Say what you want, say what you wish, but say my name and it sound like you breaking a dish. Say my name in a whisper like you making a wish. You said my name in the crowd like you afraid I exist. Say my name and it feel like you peeling off a scab that ain't really even healed yet. I don't even fear threats. I don't really feel what they feel when they fear shit. I feel like the pain at a funeral when tears strip. I don't even dodge shots. I dodge bullets like a child playing hopscotch. I dodge bullets like a break dance of pop locks. I treat your bullets like it's beef. Ball and block shots. I think my is made of razor blades. I think my body's made of steel and flames. It feels like fire when they speak my name. I think I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm bulletproof. Oh, coming from the Thunderdome like Mad Max In a black hat carrying a black cat They swear they bullets pal, but I feel like they go pat pat We run in the same race, but I bet I lap cats I'm a lab rat, you a lap cat, I'm a rap cat New number who this? 10 rounds at half time for Mao ZG. Squeeze some more in towards the end of that half. So it's been an interesting one. We saw detail, the chain flashes were so important. Key in the cleaner rounds day one. Some of them were chaotic, but the round win is a round win. Question is, have they won enough? We will start with the second pistol. That'll be an important one, especially when you trail by five. You really want to win this one. They got utterly wrecked in that first pistol, it must be said, by the Julies of Exertion, who is 14 for 9 now, tied with Torji, 14 for 3. Let's see if they can do much better on this occasion. Now the sides have changed. Seven pistols for the five players on the EG side. Again, working as a unit, quick pop flash, quick look for automatic, but Mal's are taking their time. Happy to play the clock. E250 can always go fishing on the T side at range. That one shot headshot ability. But for now, it is just Mao's sitting in these closer angles. And we saw what the Dooleys can do in that first pistol in the hands of Exertion. And Junior deliver similar impact here in the close quarters. Apparently, not. Oh it's Exertion God. who just domes him. What is it about exertion and pistols? Doesn't matter what he has, but we know what he likes. He's picked up the jewelies again, and he's looking for more. He is bloodthirsty. He is unhinged exertion. He continues to try and shut them down, but Automatic's got something to say about this one. That's the opening frag for EG. Two on four. For the consideration to save their Kevlar then and go for these helmets. Looks like it is, but looks like Impact's got something to say about that. He'll take the cheap helmets away at the very least by doing some Kevlar damage. But this pistol run has been lost as well. Never a good omen to lose both. Yeah, that's going to put them in a really rough spot now. Especially when it's your map pick. You're already pretty far down. You want the chance to roll on your CT side. Might be Mal's pulling away with this one. If BG aren't careful here. Sashin having a great game. I think he's... The X factor often on this Maus team. When he has a really great game, normally Maus have got a good chance of winning. And he's played superbly throughout this map. Quite a few early round kills that have had impact for his team and had a big influence in winning both pistol rounds for his squad now. Oh, the full spy has come out from EG. I want to still compete for this round. If they lose it, they'll fall very far behind couple of fam asses. We got the ghoulies out as well to the second round. Looks like Mal's pretty happy to just slowly work map control here towards B. Rosen's actually found a pick. Wonder if that allows them to just pull the trigger now. We so rarely saw second round four spies yesterday, I feel like. Cool. Moving away from them. Whereas they seem to be a bit autopilot previously. EG have managed to get this down to a one versus two. 
Where is George is the question. And depending on which way he comes from, he might find something interesting. Although he's more or less coming from the only direction where there isn't a weapon to pick up. Version. Pull his knife out for a second there, but still managed to deliver the goods and is perfectly happy with that. 12 to 5, a very strong start to the second half for Maus. Starting 5 10, losing a pistol and a force by afterwards. Maybe the score is why they went for it. Not wanting to get their first full by with a monstrous deficit, but it's going to be even worse now. Yeah, automatic doing good work with the FAMAS. So hard to get a triple with. Famas, I'm not going to lie, but it's not enough. Even though they set up well for him with that bait set up with automatic waiting in the corner. There's too many players prior to that. Got that MP9 out into this round for automatic. Maybe they'll try and set him up in a sneaky spot again. His positioning is very good. Automatic's biggest strengths. Currently see him at no reason to move forward have already taken top mid so he'll just be holding map control the impact is about to move in there's a chance this ak gets denied the usp to get the kill but now torji comes in and the cleanup crew is out here for mouse this might be a very brief very brief second half indeed the way Things have unfurled for EG. However, their buy is finally here. But again, the margin for error is so small once we really get rolling in this second half. 5 to 13. AWP will be out for Junior. Of course, Torji will have one as well. So the challenge is on immediately. Let's see the approach on mid then. A 1 2 2 set up for EG at the start. The double incendiaries will be there, but Mauser may be taking a page out of EG's book with numbers towards A immediately. The juniors the man for them to challenge. Didn't see AWPs at the very start in the first half, but they're certainly here in the second. Juniors lost his angle though, and they come storming his way, but can they trade that frag? He has support as well from George, and the bombsite's being held for the time being. Junior not re-emerging just yet, not taking that bait. Torji is holding the angle as exertion gets closer. He's gonna bite eventually. Junior going for it now. And those are the kills they were waiting for, Mouse. 1v3 for Torji. How does he avoid getting traded at this point? He's still got some utility, trying to make some space for himself. He has the bomb as well. Eats a big flashbang. He has a minute on the clock. He could just hold station for a moment. He'll go for a peek and automatic or deliver the goods. That's around the EG really needed. They desperately needed it. And they find a good start with Hexed getting that initial kill with the wall bank. That's always going to help you. Shuhei doesn't even get to see him. And Junior, who's had a couple of good rounds, also helps deliver for the squad. So a little more promise from EG, but a long, long way to go. Fight the mid early again with utility. Mal's decide to do because they're heavily grouped over to A early. It's the orb of Junior holding here right now, so it might be hard to deal with him. They need nades if they want to get him out of here at range. The one's been spotted. Or oh, has he? Junior forced off the angle once more. Will he be traded though? Nowhere to go after that one. But I think they've done enough overall because Torchy's find himself in a one versus four. Trying to stay alive and lighting up for him, but Walker will trade the frag. And EG are not done with this game just yet. Reducing the deficit to six. No bomb plant for Mal's. Their money's going to suck. Not good for them. I think they were trying to commit out to A in hopes that they could get that bomb down swiftly. But losing two players elsewhere prior to the A push, it makes it so that it's very obvious what they're doing. EG knew exactly where they needed to be. And Junior does a, a solid enough job to make sure that they have no chance of planting. Oh boy, oh man, the nades early. Very good against the minimal investment. That's why you learn those nade lineups. I don't wanna give them too many chances with the Deegs though. Shuhei's got a shot back. Going 
fishing on the remainder of Mao's. Every kill counts. Every kill's good for about 6k. It's important to try and get what you can from this. is isn't always much. It may not be much on this occasion for exertion with that Glock. Looks pretty, but it's a potato shooter. At certain ranges, he would need three headshots to drop one of these players. Eight rounds then for EG. The reduction means that there are five rounds between these squads. Mouse's loss bonus is rising as EG's score rises, so the task will get more difficult for EG. Time up before Mouse look for more rounds in this second half. The AKs will be very dangerous in the hands of such players as Frozen. EG is certainly going to have their work cut out for them. Just three rounds away from this first map. Yeah, that's the problem. They are so close. Is that early utility? You want to learn at home? So useful if you're playing matchmaking. A lot of players won't be ready to deal with the name Molly combo. There were a few chances for Shuhei with that D, but eventually Automatic finishes the job. Oh, then. Into utility used early. Mouse have their AKs out. They have Yimpat lining up some flashes, so looks like he might try and fight for mid. Actually didn't push with the initial flashes, but now they will go out into mid. Those smokes have got them the ground that they were looking for. Not for free, though. It's at the cost of Exertion's life as he gets spammed through the smoke. Good start for EG. Fair amount of smokes in the hole. A five on four. Quite reasonable map control. Presence in mid. Things are looking good in round 22. Now it's cutting noise. No lurkers with the four they have. Even if they try and charge into B. The four on three situation at present. Automatic with the pop flash. Now seeing nothing here. Will this was a rotation. It wasn't the deepest peak ever, but there is a few till now. There's an answer from Mouse. There's 40 seconds. Just a creep from Yimfat. No one there to trade. There are problems for Mouse on this T side. That could be a, the, that could be the opening they were looking for, though, as Walco's only good to find. The numbers are dwindling now for both squads. Frozen in a one versus two. Committing to this bomb plant. Absolutely got the clutch in him. But can he find the players before they find him? There's George Pops. Where is Junior? AWP versus the AK. Frozen with a read. Junior creeping, looking into that site. He's got to wonder if Frozen's coming in from the back. And the answer is yes, but can he find it in time? No. Never checks his six and Frozen will pop him. Clutches at the one versus two. And Mouths are moving forward again. Yeah, Frozen finds the way to isolate the initial fight. This was the first kill from George. You'd think they're off to a good start, but it's just a brute force play from Mouths into B. Frozen gets that one kill on the player, pushing the smoke. Gives him the chance in the one on two, and it comes down to mind games against Junior. The mind games go the way of Frozen. Saying yesterday, Frozen was still playing pretty well in that series, was still putting up numbers. We know he's capable of even more. It's a good example of the impact he can deliver. It's a brutal round loss for EG. Their money is now so bad. That round alone from Frozen might be what pushes Mouse over the edge here. Interesting to see the POV over Frozen. It's got like an old school land set up. But the tables were very unpredictable. Often had sharp edges, so you'd put your mouse pad over the edge. So your arm isn't getting stabbed by the table. 14 to 8. Good effort so far from EG. They did good work in that round as well, but Mouse have the talent. That is the problem. Walko heading forward now as Frozen stuck in the corner and he's given up an AK-47. Aggression from EG has paid off early. Exertion getting traded is fantastic. They keep the man advantage, EG, as they have to. The victor, the spoils, rifles collected. They convert this one, though. Mouse were able to bring things back in the last round, but Junior finds a great target in Yimfat. Ooh, I thought the patience would pay off for Junior, but shot onto Shuhei. 
10 will still decide to move through. And that won't work for him. Junior, wise to that. Orgy, who's been having a good game for himself. At one point in the first half, he was still only on two deaths. Uh, half was nearly over. It was a very efficient performance. If he gets out of this one alive, though, he's surrounded. Forward, but automatic finds him from the side. So EG stick in this. I thought Mouse were about to take over. EG find a way. They're staying sticky here. Yeah, this is good so far. Feels like the road is still a long one for EG. But they are making progress, and that's great to see. All too often, that hasn't been a phrase we've been able to use for EG for the longest time. But here they are making progress now, showing promise. Yip back, rushing with the pistol. Not having the success we saw from EG in that crazy round in the first half. Surviving the test, our EG. Again, with, even if they are to lose this game of Ancient, considering how close Mao's are. There are some positive takeaways here for EG, which is great to see. But again, the comeback is on. They're about to head to, head to double figures. Mao's have got to be frustrated at this point. I think they're just using this as a uh, as a timeout, essentially, with Shuhei just chilling in the corner. We can see him on the comms. Team discussing the rounds to come. He wanted a knife. He didn't get one. Awkward. Especially when the, the clear doesn't actually clear you. you. feel like you should get that kill. Uh, not meant to be this time. Spray from automatic. Uh, this is definitely where, when you're a fresh, a, a newer in-game leader to the top level like Shuhei, you've got to show your stuff because this comeback attempt has been pretty solid from EG so far to 14-10 now. It was 13-6 at one point. Let's see if they can continue for EG into this gun round, though. Pretty massive start to the round from Maus. It's allowing EG to take initiative, and they are taking control. This aggression out to B looking good for EG here. Minute 20 for Miles to make their plays. Oh, they just held on to that for so long. Two smokes remain for EG. One over towards mid, one over towards B. This could be made worse. But does Hex pull out the smoke grenade? He's the rifleman, he's the point man. And he has been able to pull it out in time. The flashes are here. It's their turn to eat them and the headshots as well. That's a big play from Maus. Five on three. G still have personnel around the bomb site, and Maus a barrel into the bomb site. We'll drop some smokes first. Bomb carrier looking behind, looking in T spawn just in case. But it's 25 seconds. You've got to head into this bomb site. You've allowed EG to take position. Exertion, the lurk has been dropped. The remaining two on this B bomb site. This could end in disaster for Maus. The race is on now. Shuhei runs in to get the information. And Junior's here to sweep with AWP. But Frozen's made it to plant that bomb. One versus two. Wondering about that pause. But Frozen's in a 1v2 clutch once again. And he's got the sound cue for George. He's creeping around that box. Takes one in the face. Frozen has no idea where Junior is. Junior has the angle. Awkward for both. Frozen making steps. There's that last kill in the back. Mao's had a, such a good position. How have they lost this round? Yeah, the initial commitment was good. It was really decisive as they flashed through the smoke. They just decided to commit together through the doors. But then later in the round, that decisiveness disappeared. They didn't commit into the B-bomb site. It looked like they wanted to take a little bit of time to set up those smokes. I think if they went for the smokes immediately, it was going to be really hard for EG to do anything. But instead, Automatic has time to get onto the site. And even once the smokes were deployed, they took so long that eventually that smoke faded. And so Junior was able to land that shot on the player on the cross. Hesitation maybe costing Miles there after they had that early advantage. 
five on three goes awry. That's that smoke fading, which favors Junior. This time, it's Junior who gets the better of Frozen in the one-on-one. -on -one. Big reaction from EG. They know that Mao's are going to start to feel the pressure here because this comeback is looking more and more real by the round. Monster round for EG. This could still be the round that breaks them, though. The Tech Nines on Ancient are always close. They're always close. Junior's got support from George. He's good for two. He's got a very good angle. Brazen to pull out the incendiary, but it's working for the time being. USB is out, and they've done enough. EG surviving tests like that as well. Such good signs we're seeing from the squad in the vacuum of Ancient so far. Nice setup from the squad. Good um, rifle support for the AWP. Dealt with what could have been a very dangerous round and neutered mouse before they got started. As this goes on, the question arises, who's going to step up for mouse? Will it be a call from Shuhei? Will it be one of the individuals? We saw Frozen have to win that 1v2 earlier to get one of their only T gun rounds on board. Searching up through mid. That will work. The flash looked good. Hex was... Leafly blind, but it didn't matter. Wolko comes in to help. It's a man advantage for EG. Now spread out now. Numbers game. Not too great at present. Juhei's close to Torji, though. They work together. Perhaps some sound cues to be heard from Wolko's position. Juhei dealt with swiftly, promptly. And then there were two. Mouse have to feel nervous now. Maybe the MIBR game in the backs of their minds. They played well, and EG are playing well also. Mouse are not surviving these tests. 10-5 at half time. Won both pistols. EG have been fighting back tooth and nail. Junior's got such a strong position here as well. Crouch from Torji won't be enough. The bomb spotted. What do you do with 30 seconds left? 3,400 loss bonus. If they planted a bomb at a minimum, then they could buy round after the round, but they haven't got that far either. So it will be a rough one for Maus. 16 seconds. Wait a minute. Is there a round win here? He's got position to plant the bomb on the A bomb site. He's found a window, Yimfat. This could be crazy. Hexa sent it straight through, though. He's not having any of that nonsense. Yeah, I just needed Hex to be there a few seconds slower. Then it's going to be really hard to run through that molly. Instead, Hex in position in time. It's a nice display of skill, but I thought Exertion was going to get the double kill there, but Hex just didn't stop moving. Swung out wide. As soon as the first shot was missed, Exertion couldn't adjust. So EG won those early trades. This was the moment you thought Yimpat might have a chance. That turnaround was stunning. Hex just runs through the molly. Decisive play, made the right move, and now Junior cuts them down early. The low buy from Maus, not going according to plan. They've lost the bomb. Ooh, Torji actually deals with automatic, though. Now this round is back on the cards. High variance in round 28. This is not where EG want to falter after all the good work they've done. Walker can't hold that position for long, surely. Go on the investigation. As you go the long way round, though, if he does, they will find a very nice surprise. There's Torji, swiftly dealt with. No knife shenanigans. No space for that. The tension such as this. Miracle required then. Yimfat and Exertion remain. 53 seconds. There might be a fair amount of play left in this round if Mouse can find the right opportunity. That smoke will slow things down, though. That is the last smoke for EG. That bomb is very close to the bomb site. 2v2 then. Exertion will run distraction, but Yimfat's got to wait for the smoke to go. You can see Exertion on the run. Trying to show something, but EG deliver. They understand the mission. Wonderful work in that respect. As he go for the win by elimination exertion, does he try to get that bomb and go for the bomb plant? Swings, double peak, perfect from EG. The score is tied.
PG on the road back. This was 13-6 Maus at one point. What a comeback this has been from EG to even get here. This was the moment I thought the round might be back on because Torji landed a fantastic flick, couching out the aggression. Then Exertion actually wins that fight, but the response from EG was fantastic. They double up, they stick together, they go aggressive, they take the two-on-one fight, and it favors them. Now it is guns out from Maus again. What is the solution? Three of them stack towards A early here on the Maus side. Is that where they want to end the round, though? Doesn't look like EG have taken too much space at the start of this round. Play back from the bomb sites. And exertion is given room towards mid. That could set up this A split nicely here. EG are expectant. Good start. Only two of them here, though. They will have concerns with regards to mid. It's going to make it very difficult for them to be successful against these four players on long. That's a call for reinforcements. Walco starting to wonder about red room. Mid has been abandoned for a while for EG. That'll slow the rotation down somewhat. Which way does exertion go? Many questions to be answered now as flashes come into the A bomb site from the CTs. Still holding though, not successful so far. Walco behind the bomb site itself now. 38 seconds. He needs help from his teammates, but they've got some angles. And here come those flashes again. We spoke about them in the first half. And they're here for the second as EG moves to game point versus Mouse. What a comeback we have seen so far. The comeback is almost complete. They could do it in regulation. And from Mouse, this is an absolute disaster. They are crumbling in front of our eyes. So many of the recent rounds have gone the way of EG. And the only round that went the way of Maus was that frozen one on two. They might need similar heroics here because their buy is bad. They only have one AK. This is EG's chance to pull off the complete comeback. Here comes the push from Maus then. Ball over. For his teammates, can't find his crosshair. Can't put it in the right place. Dershon and the impact certainly can, though. Been all the rounds in regulation, and there yet, there may be yet more to come. Got to go for this, of course. Eg. Mao's on the comeback now. After all these rounds from Eg, what a great effort it's been so far. There'll be more to do for both teams. EG still in the fight here. They've all got kits, but they've got so many frags to find. And they really need to, need to get on this bomb site soon. 2v3. No one is trying to defuse the bomb just yet. Don't forget about that part. Junior in the smoke will be dealt with. They didn't give them the kills. I feel like after those first two frags, overtime was coming. And here it is. Yeah, a bit of a faster commitment on the actual site push there from Mouse. And maybe that's what they needed. They take it to overtime. They get those first two entries. And from that point, it's so difficult for EG to do anything to come back into the round. See that utility forcing Walco into the open. Hex trying to play behind that smoke, but not enough support for him. Well then, how does this go in overtime? It's EG who worked so hard to get here. They had map point. It slipped away from them. The fact they brought it to this point is already impressive. See if they can keep it up into overtime. They stay on CT side. Walco is thinking about hanging around, but decides to concede that map control early. Like in the util usage that we're seeing from EG, the HE grenades. Nice detail to them. Big risk taken though by EG, and they've got nothing to show for them. Trying to force Miles to look away from the flashes. Didn't work in their favor. And they are getting domed left, right, and center in this one. Miles are starting well in overtime. Yeah, difficult to work out with that flash. I feel like it's just such a heavy commitment. That if that flash gets dodged and you commit with two players aggressively, I mean, unless it's only one T player there, you're going to have a tough time. And we saw Shuhei had frozen that 1-2 that combo.
working together exactly as they needed to, covering the right angles, knowing exactly where each other were. Even from that re-aggression from Automatic, he almost got baited in to the peak when Frozen was ready for him. So a good start for Mouse then. They take back the lead, which they have had for the majority of this map. Still early days here in overtime. Saw how good EG can be on their CT side in regulation. How many rounds they are able to win there. Surprised if they can try and bounce back in this upcoming round. And that really felt very wild from EG after all the success we saw from them. Trying something different, maybe. There's a challenge in mid from Maus looking to catch EG off guard once again. And they don't have the position to answer to what's been happening just yet. Shuhei with a massive push through the smoking donut, catching George unawares as well. Fast aggression from Maus is crippling EG on their CT side. And feels like Ancient is slipping away from them all over again. Off retake. They have different angles, but they need to win some early fights. Ulko will not deliver, even though Hex has found something. It's got to be too late here. He'll go through the molly. Exertion lands the shots. 3G. What a, a rough start to overtime after you work so hard to bring it to this point. Lose the first two rounds pretty quickly, pretty convincingly. Now they have a maximum of one CT round they can try and get out of this first half of overtime. Wow. Night and day between regulation and overtime. Great timing from Shuhei. Beautiful confidence as well. But look how he just sends it into Donut. He understands the space he has created for himself and George is never going to expect a swing like that so aggressive so fast so decisive from Mouse an angry Mouse who should have taken this in normal time storming so far in overtime you really love to see your in-game leader coming through with plays like that into overtime something that I'd say Carrigan oftentimes does when a game starts to get a little chaotic he'll just feel like he can take the right initiative at the right moments and Shuhei is a good fragging in-game leader so if he thinks he can find a, a weakness find an exploit early on why not go for it then the big risk taken to go through the smoke but gets a big reward for it basically wins his team the round right then and there so EG competing for just a single CT round Fighting as aggressively for mid. Torji's been nade in, but he gets the orb into position. Walko decides it's not worth hanging around. Good reason. That orb is scary on the other side. Oh, that was a shot in the back, wasn't it? Like team Absolutely. damage. But EG are still the first to lose a player. Walko has been lost. Goes from bad to terrible for EG this overtime. First half where they only got the five rounds as well. The T side, which is to come. So they're really going to have to dig deep if they are to make a recovery. There might still be one round in this half for them. Automatic's got all of two HP. Miles wait to punish a peak of Torji. Minutes on the clock for them. And they have a lot of utility as well for around this B bomb site as Exertion lurks. Junior keeping an eye on mid. From that donut position, he can. Make sure no one makes their way to the other side. Hex has lost his angle due to these flashes. Just jiggling a little, but they know that there's probably a second player here. Juhei is swinging now. 2 HP, not enough for automatic. Hex instantly traded. The numbers game overwhelming the B-bomb site. And Junior has nothing left to do. A clean sweep from Maus in the first half of overtime. Always difficult to know who's going to keep their nerve better once it gets to overtime. After such a strong comeback against Maus, you could have seen them crumble here, but that's not happened. They've been able to pull through. 
was frozen spamming early it was because of that cave pressure that he's able to just go for a, a short little wall bang. See if players are falling back. Gives the early advantage that allows Mouse to convert. Puts them up to map point. G need a flawless T side. And as you said, a T side did not look good in regulation. Taking a bit of early nade damage as well over towards B. Control looking good for them though. They'll leave automatic as the pillar in that position. The rest of the team start to group up outside this B side. Junior holding on to dear life. Heading towards the minute mark as they wait for the utility to expire. There's still a fair amount for Maus. Same can be said for EG, although Junior's doing the heavy lifting with the util. Just a one flash for the squad. Might want to drop that to a teammate so he can hold angles for a push. Just as we saw from Maus on the T side, EG will have four around this B bomb site as they wait for their time to strike. But what does automatics play? Is he going to go into the A-bomb site first and see what's happening there? He's so far away from his teammates who aren't pushing just yet. He has no grenades to offer and he's still staying very static indeed. Or are they going to just bomb it over towards A after offering these grenades on that B-bomb site? So many questions to be answered. Walker gets traded. 22 seconds left. Automatic starting to move now. The impact makes his way into mid in the meantime. That A-bomb the B-bomb site still needs to be cleared. There are two mouse players here. 14 seconds to get this bomb planted. Tries to cross in isolation. No one there to trade. This one may end in disaster. Maus take it then. Overtime secured. Four from four. Enacting revenge. An angry Maus after a noble comeback from EG. Trying to unwind There's a skyline And it's smiling on us tonight Let's sit
after a great comeback from EG and a last late round from Maus, overtime is a one-sided affair as Maus takes four from four to do what maybe they will certainly feel like, actually, they should have done in normal time and take that first map of Ancient. How do you feel that one went, Hawker? Yeah, a little sketchy for Maus. I wanted to see them close it out more convincingly, but I guess it is EG's map pick, so it's stealing it away. You can't be too mad at the end of the day. And I guess it's also a good sign for Maus that they were able to come through in that overtime. I think mentally, that's showing strength from them. It's also really nice seeing Shuhei make some plays into that overtime and really just take some rounds by the scruff of the neck and just win them for his team. Overall, though, listen, uh, the fact that EG are continuing to compete here definitely gives me promise for, for this team in the future. I thought they had a, a couple of impressive players, and considering how bad it started, I know it, it sucks, and it's an awful feeling to lose like that after the comeback, but it's still definitely seemingly a step in the right direction for EG right now. Yeah, absolutely. I would say there were some positive takeaways for the squad. For me, I think it was pretty good to set out a measure of EG from the beginning of this series. Keep the nine seed, the, the different ways they can succeed or fail. And we saw a lot of success from the squad. We saw them deal pretty well. We saw them effective with fast rounds where they didn't have much to, to play with, like an eco round or a force by round. We saw them deny them very handily when it was Mouse's turn to do the same. We saw them have attention to detail with the chain flashes to work as a unit. To, to have confidence in each other to deliver the goods and set themselves up for success. We saw lots of great things. We saw them not give up on the game despite the deficit, which was worse than what you're seeing here. And this is a comeback round by round to take the lead as well before Mouse squeezes in that last round, sending it into the B bomb site. But again, I think even, this, even in loss, EG delivered great things there. A lot of things we've been looking for for a long time for this team. So I'm quite happy to see that at least. Yeah, that's definitely a, a positive from EG. I think in terms of specific players, I, I thought Junior was pretty solid with the AWP. And at this sort of team, you would want him to be a, a pretty big piece of this sort of squad. And then George also had uh, some nice rounds where I think he was getting involved. So yeah, pretty, pretty happy, I think, at least to see some promise from EG. It's just a shame that they played some pretty close maps so far at Pro League. And they haven't quite been able to win one yet. Even against Ents, they took a 16-14 loss, which is a bit of a shame, but I'm sure the map win will come. Take a look at our aim high head to head and see the scores on the doors for Ancient. Lots of fragging from both squads, but Exertion and George are who are under our magnifying glass. Yeah, I think both of them did good work with the rifle, both involved in a, a few early fights as well. I think George also had a, a couple of flash assists. And honestly, both teams had plenty of flash assists throughout, but Exertion had a, a really good start to this game. Basically won both pistols for his squad or played a big part in that. And at the end of the game, that makes a big difference here because if you don't win both pistols here as Maus, you probably end up losing in regulation. So good to see Exertion back to his best because we know what he's capable of. Maybe he hasn't been showing it recently, but got that potential shining through this one. Yeah, it's another thing we didn't even mention, the securing both pistols. Again, the exertion was great in both of them. Obviously, one was quite outstanding with the 4K, but uh, they were both done in violent fashion. So more credit to EG for clawing in so many rounds by all of uh, those troubles in normal time. So again, great things we saw. Didn't come out with a victory, but there are certainly positive takeaways for the squad. I think Maus will feel shaky, you know, despite their opponents improving and doing better than they used to be. They'll still want confident victories themselves. So I feel like they'll be left very unsatisfied with the nature of that game win. And that's a positive thing. They'll come into the next map hungry. They are 1-0 up in this best of three. Let's see if it's going to be two or three maps after this break. Wear your passion. Share your passion. Wherever. Whenever. Gaming is a lifestyle. Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com. 
It's time for the DHL Drop. Every week, CSGO talent go head-to-head -to, -head to beat the buzzer. You can join them by typing exclamation point DHL Drop in the chat. Answer the questions correctly to get added to the global leaderboard. The higher you climb, the closer to earning a price you are. Tighten up the belt on these dogs that try to walk you. Grab the mic and give them some real talk. Some real talk. Some real talk. For my thoughts. Some real talk. Some real talk. For my thoughts. Some real talk. Some real talk. For my thoughts. Some real talk. Some real talk. For my thoughts. Some real talk. Some real talk. For my thoughts, some real talk, some real talk. For my thoughts, some real talk, some real talk. For my thoughts, real talk is what I'm doing with you. Even when I freestyle or write joints down, I'm speaking my mind. You know, bam, me beating round. I'm spitting on another beat, bringing all type of heat. Say it on the mic the same way I say it in the street. I don't need excuses for why I do this. Just put the headphones on and turn up the music. Do damage on the mic, bam, so abusive. Bust a nut and let loose my creative juices. Drop exclusives for DJs and producers. Got some new ish, always in your face like a nuisance. Making movements like the smoke from a Cuban cigar. Before you a star, you a human, brah. The fusion I'm using's amusing. This ain't no illusion, not causing confusion. Authentic, not mutant. If I lose my groove, I say, fam, what you doing? Real talk. Some real talk. Some real talk. For my thoughts. Some real talk. Some real talk. For my thoughts. Some real talk. Some real talk. For my thoughts. Some real talk. Some real talk. For my thoughts. Some real talk. Some real talk. For my thoughts.
Inferno is the second map of the series. I wondered if we were going three the way EG were playing in that second half, but hey ho, Maus were able to turn things around in overtime. Not only forcing overtime, sending it on that last round of regulation, but sending it every round thereafter. Can they take their momentum into another pistol win? It would be three from three. Will Exertion be the star? So many questions to be answered as we go into Inferno. Yeah, and Inferno, obviously the map that we saw Miles perform fantastically on yesterday. They beat MIBR 16-7, even though they lost the series. This was the one map they looked really good on. So that is definitely a, a scary sign for EG heading into this map. On that Inferno game, it was even Frozen who was doing a lot of the heavy lifting for Miles. So that is a, a scary, scary thing to be going up against. When Frozen's good on Inferno, he can be really, really brutal on Banana. You do not want to feel his wrath. So let's see if EG have done their homework, if they can find a way around the strength that Mouse have shown on this map. All right then, we ride with Exertion immediately. That's looking to do some heavy lifting. You can, you can just see him on the X-ray. <laughs> Going straight into Banana. That guy is bloodthirsty once again. Only Glocks on the shorter ranges of Inferno, save for mid, of course. I'll be closing the distance very quickly indeed. I feel like we should round up every, buzz, every person who has a P250, a P2000 enabled, and just ask them why. Junior has one for the CT side. I'm not saying it's wrong. I just want to know why. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll find out someday. Maybe. This rotation from EG. Is it going to come fast enough, though? Because they are swinging into pool on the mouse side. An uncontested bomb site. What is the meaning of this? EG must have a plan. The Flash is making their way through as well. What do mouse make of this? They're swinging towards CT. They have to understand that they are being led into some kind of trap by EG. And they've responded in time, crossing everybody on Banana now. It's going to be a hard one for EG. The utility has come and God save for that defuse kit, but I don't think they're going to get their automatic one versus two. It's going to get deleted. Mouse have won three pistol rounds from three pistol rounds. Yeah, that's unfortunate for EG. Get the wrong read and don't get the flank quickly enough, even though they took initiative. We've seen that Maus are willing to go slow on these pistols, so I can understand why EG took a bit of time before pushing. X tried his best, but with those couple of shots landing, so many different angles to deal with. Once you lose that B sight, you have to have a very well executed retake, even with the kit. That was not meant to be. So Maus off to another strong start. One of these halves. Just got to make sure they hold on against the force play, though. This time EG forcing on their CT side, second round again. See what it can deliver for them. Definitely some close range angles on Inferno where the SMGs and the pistols can be potent. Got that scout to hold long as well. Four man A stack right now for EG. So, Miles do commit to this. Maybe there is a chance for EG to wreak some havoc. White T round from Maus. I see a fair few of these on Inferno. Holding for a certain time. Junior going for those fast flicks, but won't be fast enough on this occasion. Didn't make the connection he was looking for. I was heading towards the B bomb site now, leaving Shuhei in position in library. Library no longer a library in CS2. They still have elevation though, where that sofa used to be. Replace of a table, if I remember correctly. I do wonder if that's going to be a theme as the other maps get remade as well. There's no more boiler and boiler. Boiler isn't is completely is something else entirely. I suppose they're not feeling beholden to the iconic callouts years old. Not necessarily a good thing or a bad. 
yeah, it'll be fun, you know, Pe teaching people, maybe new players, exactly uh, why people are calling spots certain names. I feel like it's so hard once you, you get a spot down in your head and you call it what you call it. It's not easy to change that. Be fair, top banana on Inferno, still call car pretty often. The car for a while. I'm sure some of the uh, the old call outs will stick around. Just learning about some of the old call outs on places like Nuke. Uh, on maps like Nuke, based on age old plays by different players like Megaton. Oh, wow. I doubt it, um, almost anybody knows what that is. I didn't at the time, but you can look it up. See if you can find it on the YouTubes. Maybe it's there, maybe it isn't. Let me know if you do. Might give you a retweet. EG will be looking for their demise, and they will find it very quickly indeed. Ex inviting close quarters engagement with that MP9. A fast eco round is a good eco round. A little damage done by EG. Or play standing for Maus as they look to continue this role in round four. Again, they've won three pistols from three. That is massive for them. Yeah, that's honestly such a, a game changer. Maybe more so in CS2 when MR12 comes around. We'll see if the economy changes to maybe make that less impactful. Getting these 3 0 starts, it's it's a massive difference, especially now that they're on their map pick. It really puts CG in trouble. Look at that damage, though. Shuhei had to really risk everything to get that banana control. It cost him a lot. He sent himself over the top. This time he survives. Yeah, being alive is certainly satisfactory when it comes to a banana take. A lot of damage can come your way. Four EG players looking for their first frag in this round. It has been an arid landscape for them to start Inferno. Very hot climate indeed. And Miles taking their map control. Oh, there is so much trouble. That flashback gave them everything they didn't want. Eating bars of soap, one banana our Miles. The timing from EG, the slow pace from Mouse being punished, and EG are looking for more. They've secured the bomb. They've secured Top Banana for the time being. Impact's trying to do what he can, but Torzi's has got much to do. He's doing the heavy lifting if he can find anything in this position. Surrounded by EG players. There was no one anti-flash. They all ate that flashbang and got absolutely wrecked. EG have had those good flash assists. Here comes the impact, though. He needs a kill, really, if they want a chance at this A bomb site. See, he's knocking on the door, but no one answering. G pretending they're not home. And the impact will respect their wishes. Well, she's got a chicken. Carry that through with him to the next round. Smiles will have to save what they can out of this one. Yeah, those flash assists have been a real strength of EG. I think that's great to see because you could argue, you look at the names on this squad, you maybe don't expect the, the same massive firepower, but we've seen teams in the past come through with great utility usage and have that as their strength. Maybe that's something EG can start to try and lean towards it. Mouse have not been able to dodge their flashes in a lot of rounds throughout this series. And that leads to a very easy round win for EG. That was one of the most devastating pop flashes I've seen in that position for a long time. Again, there was... Um, it was... We saw that uh, an angle held from the half wall where you could see one of the usual coffin flashes coming. Yeah, I think maybe From Mezzi. Mezzi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Back in the room. Mezzi was holding it. That was a great position for it, but hasn't been adopted by too many people just yet from what I've seen. They got hit by a bus on Banana there. But again, they're still well equipped for this one. Infer often lurking in the apartment. Automatic will get the best of him this time. And maybe there's a rifle upgrade in there for EG as well. But have a look at the response to that. They take that engagement towards top mid and they go... They retract into the A bomb site. So now they are devoid of information. Automatic's wandering on long. But in the meantime, 
Now's are encroaching on this bomb site or trying to at the very least. Looking for their first kill. Walko will get drops and there's time to plant this bomb now. Long rotation for the other two of EG. They haven't planted the bomb after all and Shuhei has been dropped as well. Went for the fake plant and that has bought time for Hex to make his way over with even more utility. Frozen and Torji, two versus four. No util. Two flashes for EG. Incendiary held by Hex for a moment there. It'll certainly be coming. Torji will want to frag ASAP. It's part of that flashbang. Clock is ticking though. Two of the four players with kits. They've got to get escapes on EG. It's a slow and deliberate push into the bomb site. Torji trying to fall back and EG's pace is very good indeed. Plenty of times to defuse that bomb and find their second round. Yeah, I actually don't mind EG taking a, a good amount of time there on that retake because that they have a very good idea where their opponents are going to be. And you saw that Mal's were, were constantly getting antsy, just hoping they could find a fight. I actually even like the position that Torji took there. He was playing almost ahead of the incendiary that was going to land at triple box. So he plays out behind the pillar. And that AWP in the post plant can be very strong. But unfortunately, once his teammate goes down, once Frozen gets nothing, it becomes too tricky for the AWP to win that round. So there, there was a glimpse there, a glimmer of hope for Mal's in the two on four. Uh, EG makes sure they don't give away any fights for free. They work together on the retake. And a solid recovery here from EG. Again, losing a pistol round. This time bouncing right back with the rifles. Actually puts Mouse's money down into a position where if they lose this round, they might be in trouble. You can even see in this one, Torji's unable to get a helmet with that AWP. So keep in mind as this round gets underway. Torji on head. Make his way quietly into the apps. That could be a nasty surprise if he can find the correct angle. Can EG have shallow positions as far as A is concerned? Not wanting to give Maus what they are looking for. One minute ten on the clock. There is one smoke grenade remaining for EG, unless there's utility on the floor near B. I don't believe so. Ooh. Shot while blind from Junior then. It's a shame for Torji, who worked so hard to get into Boiler. Oh. Junior goes back to the well, but Yimpat's there with the Orc to deny. Frozen gets one from beyond the grave, so it's a three on two favoring Maus. Hext has it all to do from this pit position. The smoke might allow him to survive. That's a T side smoke deployed. It's not going to have much of an angle onto the site here. How long can he stay alive for? Showing presence now. Trying to run distraction. There's only two remaining. And Maus have the angles. George is surely walking to his doom. A jiggle, a crouch peek, and Hex is in trouble now. In for entertaining baiting, not over peeking though. As Hex is trying to bite that peek. In fact, picks perfect timing. Big 3k for him to keep Maus in a good position. Not an easy task, that frag from Boiler. But managed to make it work. That was a very, very key position for them, especially after this opening from Junior. But have a look at that. A very fast quick scope from Yimfa. That was a very important frag. Turning point in the round for Maus, maybe. And it turns very brutal for EG. A timeout taken by the squad as their money is less than ideal, to put it mildly. Definitely see the raw ability there from Yimfa in some of these rounds where he does get these multi kills. And it feels like it's in some of the more active spots sometimes that he's finding some success. Where he has to go for these movement heavy plays that are actually working out pretty well for him. So good to see Yimpat slowly delivering more impact. The EG, do they take some risks in this round? They've already been getting banana control. Their buy in this round is limited. They are missing some nades, but it's the weaponry that might be the bigger issue. A couple of MP9s in the mix. Looks like they will just concede Banana early. Frozen putting down that smoke. 
allows him to just lurk out and there was a molly he could even duck into it she will just hold top banana so g having to play back from the b site right now it's only one ct it's only george actually towards b happy to take that risk right now Ooh, good nade back though very good nade Change of pace from Maus, swinging deep towards B. How do EG respond? George is on an island for the time being. Junior's making his way over quietly, not wanting to give the time cues up. Goes the long way in CT. Could drop some grenades for his teammate and fall back if he wanted to, depending on the read. 50 seconds on the clock. Smoke for his teammate. Both committed on the bomb site, though. Might be a reactionary smoke at this point. 40 seconds on the clock. A fourth man for Miles heading towards that B bomb site. Holding a flash towards Paul when Junior fires the shot, I would imagine. He'll need it immediately. George gets the first kill. Junior. Very difficult dance for him, but he needs to stay alive just to delay this bomb plant. Frozen can do nothing until he's down. Indeed, he is. But great work here. And Frozen's alone in the clutch. We saw 1v2s from him. Now it's the 1v3. Walker with the MP9 looking for information, trying to show a little. Four bullets of Frozen. He's got to go for the one taps. He has to find the one taps. And they're all coming from CT. Is he going to get a chance to reload? Once he clears Banana, that might be it. The smoke is up, and surely he's got to go for the spray now. Moving into position. How good are your angles? Gun peek from him, and Automatic is here to respond. It's got more and more difficult for Miles towards the end there, and EG will find their third. And we got that frozen Torji combo in the B site again. And I think Torji needed to do a little better there. That fight towards CT against an MP9. He didn't look 100% ready for that duel. It ended up being a, a fight that the MP9 was actually able to win, which was a big surprise. Normally, I feel like you get that AWP onto B, you're so happy to just get that established and play that turret AWP style. Torji not able to deliver for Maus that time round. So again, EG having to start from behind, but doing good work to fight back into this map right here. Automatic puts down the early incendiary. It will be beaten though. Maus into top mid early with the pistols. Oh boy, that's not good. Pretty good start. Walko, all oh. these angles are cruel for him. But now he's found himself upon defensible angle as well, but he will go down eventually also. Two remain now for EG. This is not the start they were looking for. Their money's going to be annihilated if they lose this round. It might be annihilated even if they win it. Keeping that bomb close as they lurk. He in fact picks it up once again with Junior. Oh, what the Glock to finish off the job. That is the kind of round that EG cannot afford to lose figuratively and literally. Oh man, I mean the Mollies were down early to try and deny this exact sort of play. It was the first player through isolated, but Torji won the duel. That opens up these chaotic fights into CT, which is exactly what the Pistols want. And then it's only fitting, I mean, it's the jump and the Glock, but it's only fitting the pistol is the thing that closes it for Maus. Considering that's all they had at the start of the round. It's still wild for it to be the Glock of Yimpat, though. It sucks for EG. Now they might be in trouble here. Or little into this round. The boost, this idea, it will work for automatic. So maybe some juice left in this round for EG. Icy situation for EG, but if Automatic can find something, it might get even dicier for Maus with only four players remaining. Trying to get that pistol so present to let Automatic play off of it. The plate is working perfectly, the bomb's been dropped. How much time can he buy though? Flurry of kills for Maus and perhaps the worst is over, but two versus three, this could still be doable. They have to be careful. Be frozen to plant the bomb. George running to fractures, Walko takes position. Kept it awkward. All Utah coming the way of EG. 
That'll separate the fight. What does George do now? May have to leave this bomb site, Miles. There may be weapons to collect here for EG. But indeed, I'm still thinking about the brutal loss they've had in that round prior. It's changed everything for them. Maybe a bonus rifle to collect, but uh, again, a situation very rough for EG all of a sudden. Ooh. Oh, all the kills. Obviously, not the round for EG. The saved orb will be a nice way to try and get something going in the upcoming round. Keep that T economy low as well. See just how valuable this utility was. Shuhei can jump all the way up on top of the box. Get the first entry to Pop Jr. on the other side of that smoke as well. There's a force buy then from EG with the save door. Wow, I thought this was going to be a save from them. But maybe with all that damage, they feel like they could try and break that T economy. Maybe they feel like with that orb, they've got a chance at a round win. But this is a high risk force buy here from EG. Got mid taken the early. Bomb. They know they don't have the bomb. Oh, they normally like a slow round, so they are sending it though. They are fully committing to this one, and you do start to wonder someone's gonna have to go all the way back down to that ramp. Or maybe something else weird will happen. But indeed, the retreat begins now. So much heavy presence. What do EG make of this? So deep towards the A-bomb site and they disengage. They've got no utility left. This is just a simple, a straight up mistake from Mouse. They have no utility whatsoever. George on B has a smoke grenade to deploy. 40 seconds on the clock. This could be a colossal catastrophe for Mouse, depending on what happens. Oh boy. Especially with that molly coming over. Can't extinguish it if Automatic puts that down at the right time. 25 seconds, surely it's time to deploy it. There it is, perfect timing. The AK as well, the crossfire. Ah, the counter flash. 19 seconds. This is going to be a slaughter, I think, maybe in all directions. They try to play the numbers game. Automatic just off his strength and shoulder. And that's the AK loss. That's a big frag. Nine seconds, so to plant this bomb. And everything is dealt with. Unbelievable. The time on the clock is so close to too late. Mao still find a way to force it. A big error from them, but the AKs will fix it. Talk about a band-aid. Yeah, man, that's a bailout and a half there. Jeez, like that should not have worked, but the, the crossfires weren't really there for EG. You see Automatic ends up taking a solo fight. No one really swings off his contact. Mouse are just about able to isolate the fight, and they still had to land the shots quickly. But they did exactly that. It was pure headshots. The impact continues to have effective play here on the T side. I thought it was going to be EG using the nades that Mal's wasted to show why utility was powerful. Then sometimes you've got to remember Counter Strike's about headshotting. And that's what Mal's do. There was so much potential there for EG. The automatic didn't want to reveal himself to multiple T's and the impact came in with some nasty aim indeed. But this is why they have the team they have, Mouse. It's nice to see them deliver when things go wrong like that. They have the depth to do that, the individual talent to make up for issues. So rough for EG though, even when automatic goes down, they still have a crossfire. They're still Mouse player standing in the pool, bombs barely on the bomb site to start planting. And everything is lost. So close and yet so far for EG. They trail by four. Only three from ten on their CT side may simply not be enough. Yeah, this could get out of control now. That was the risky force by that EG took in the previous round. And I thought it was about to work. I thought it was actually about to swing in their favor. Instead, now they don't have all that much to work with here. There's that half wall smoke, which allows Shuhei to get forward. You see how awkward it is for the orc to find that angle. 
So banana control taken by Mouse without losing much for it. Just having a look at top mid. Get dragged into the stack though. Will back on up. Utility used by Mouse over towards A, but it is B that they end on. It's mainly just that all of Junior they've got to deal with. And if they put these smokes down, it's going to be difficult for Junior's AWP to get involved here. Popping around the corner. Shuhei gets dropped first. He's created the space. And that's what it's about sometimes. Space creation. Time for Junior to save this AWP. Away he goes. Scraps for the remainder. Mouse, I was expecting to see, especially after yesterday. Narrowly winning that first map of ancient, well, surviving that first map of ancient, I think it's fair to say. The strong win towards the end in overtime. Narrowly surviving ancients. Putting themselves in a very good position. There is still play in this half, though. Be an interesting test to see how close EG can get to the remainder of these rounds. Mouse confirm that they will be leading at half time. The question is by how much? Wait and see, but it's uh, looking like Mouse could get a really strong lead here. He said Shuhei just ran in so that Exertion could trade. Much for EG to do after a solid B execute from Mouse. It's often a pretty good way of going about these rounds where you're maybe not 100% sure what your opponents have. As long as the counter utility doesn't stall you, those B-sided takes can be very strong. Even if there are some trades, the post plants normally pretty effective on that B-site. A timeout taken then by EG. They realize they have to get the ball rolling soon. Otherwise, this series will likely slip away from them. That's felt at least somewhat competitive here, but the actual amount of rounds won by EG, not really good enough right now. Look at Exertion. He had all the money, but he's chosen to go with a MAC-10 in this round. Got to keep an eye on whether he'll be flying in early. Going to cause some chaos in this one. I was waiting at the U till be frozen and Torji in position. Well, frozen's man with the flashes. First one is deployed, and out come Maus. Mixed results. Yimfa so good for a multi frag though. So, oh, you go first. You die. Tell me where they are. I kill. Now EG need to ask themselves if they want to lose everything. Two of the three players around the A bomb site, but they've got one flash in the hands of Junior. And he's top banana, so I don't think they'll be going for this one. I see Exertion just sent in first with the MAC-10, hoping to really draw the attention away and use that movement, if possible, to run and gun with the SMG. Allows Yimpat to get some great trades. And honestly, Yimpat has looked fantastic on this map. His aim, his multi-kills have been great. Now Junior might be in trouble if he's not careful. That leg shot. Enough of a warning for Shuei to slow down. I think he did because there was a nade coming his way. How heavily do Maus want to commit here? They've got a bit of money in the bank. I don't think they need to go throwing everyone at this. They actually nearly died to the bomb there. He got chunked down to five health on Banana, but he's fine. Now 9-3 for Maus, and this looks like the convincing performance we saw from them yesterday on this map as well. Honestly, those bomb blasts look like they're going to be a massacre in CS2. Current radius size is ginormous or humongous, whichever one you prefer. 
six round deficit for EG. They held on to enough. Automatic sending it through. Everybody's blind, but Warco's the one to deliver. Good support for him if he can survive, but Torji will punish him on the logs. Moving forward now, battle sniper mode is Torji. He wants this position, but the counter flashes will slow things down. Forcing a lot of util though from EG. They'll be very concerned towards Bernardo. They'll send a third man over there. There's an instant response, a read maybe from Maus as they head towards A. Junior do with the AWP alone. Might have to take a risk at some point. A long is also open. Instead, he decides to back up into pit. This is one of the positions that Maus will surely expect it. They put a molly in there. It could be almost impossible for Junior. Maybe a smoke down to try and buy time is his best bet. He's not going to have help anytime soon. He is still alone. Three-man rotation through Banana by EG. Junior is utterly surrounded. You can see the remarks on his face there. They're on Graveyard. They are everywhere. He is a bean in a tin at the moment. The choices have been taken by his opponents. Down he goes. Automatic and Hex now. Again in a similar situation. Outmaneuvered by Maus on Maus's T side. Have nothing left to do but fall back and accept defeat on this occasion. Cheeky one from Automatic, but still, it's double figures for Maus. The exit kills don't really help EG at this point, honestly. Maus are going to have money, basically, whatever happens. I mean, it's still nice, I guess, to get both players to die. That means you can steal an AK. Well, maybe not, actually. Automatic can pick up the AK there. Unfortunate. Either way, just having Junior in pit like that, it's so awkward for him. Like, he did a pretty good job at surviving so long, but you're know, all being like that. You would love to be able to play a little more proactively earlier in the round, at least get the chance to go for one fight and then drop back. Just never happened for him. Had to play defensively, had to play for the rotate. Ended up getting nothing out of that pit position. It's exertion. I think he's going through this smoke. I think so. Not yet. As we'll make sure they hold on to Banana at the same time. And make sure they get that bomb as well. Always important for that prior round. Frozen left on Banana. The rest of the team grouped into top mid. G playing pretty passive on A because there's only two of them here right now. And the usual from Maus. Top mid has been taken. I don't know how many retakes we've seen from from EG as far as top mid, top mid is concerned. It seems they want to pick their fights elsewhere. Again, passive on a shallow positions being held, information seeking. I think towards that 40 second mark, the urgency tends to rise. Maus have shown nothing towards top mid yet and Long's been abandoned by EG at this point. There's a re-smoke of Long, which could be telling though. They've got three players in the right position. That helped the swing through it. Doesn't. A 3 1 or automatic. Walko defends as well. It's working in EG's favor. 20 seconds on the clock now. Just holding from the site. But the defenses are running low. Not as low as Maus, though. 1v3 for Torji. He has to deal with Hex here, but he won't. The USP will be enough. Putting that smoke, forced to put that smoke into the Molly on short, gave them such a strong position on the A bomb site. Made it impossible for the T's to swing without getting wrecked. And EG will squeeze another one in, in in this half. Saw a nice little nod there from Coach Axed in the background for EG. Seemed uh, very happy. They were able to get at least one more round out of this half. Axed again having a pretty solid performance here at Pro League. Maybe the last map wasn't great for him. All in all, definitely putting up numbers. To the last round of the half, Maus will move into top mid early. They're pouncing through the smoke, and EG aren't ready. Hex does his best, and he gets a triple somehow. Pillar of defense on the site, able to lock it down. Exertion is looking for that flank, but he's got to go crazy here. And the Galil might not be the weapon for the job. He misses that opportunity. Now this gets very awkward for Maus.
George lurking. In a very unusual position. Same could be said for Hexter as well. It'll be hard to find something in this round. That bomb is surrounded by CTs. Who has a look first? Exertion waiting for a misstep. Still a minute on the clock for Mouse, but this will start to dwindle very quickly with four players alive for EG. There is much work to be done. Frozen slowly checking the angles, popping for a for trade fragger. Down to 12 HP. They'll take such oppressive angles, EG. Next to impossible to clear all of this. Sound cues heard. Flank on the way by Hex. A confident peek from him will mean that EG once again will have five rounds of half time. It was almost enough on Ancient. Will it be enough on Inferno? Time will tell. Yeah, I hope you're ready for the combat. Steve Nash, I'm about to bring the sun back. Forecast, looking bright for the combat. Can't ignore it, promise you can never sun that. I pray for it, get ready for the combat. Yeah, yeah. I think it's time for the combat. I hope you're ready for the Yeah, I see it's time. Press play on the tape, no rewind. No delay, put it all on the line. Only going up, ain't no room for the climb. Meet me at the top, or you won't ever see me. I'm making dreams come true like a genie. I'm making moves soon, you gon' have to king me. Checkmate, crown, you gon' have to bring me. Ain't no other way. Up next, then I'm putting you away. Yeah, maybe another day. Give me a trope, I'ma put it yeah. on display. Hope you ready for the combat. Steve Nash, I'm about to bring the sun back. Forecast, looking bright for the combat. Second half of Inferno, again, a similar situation for Regi. Still looking for their first pistol round. Now would be a great time to get it because let's not forget how hard they had to work to come back after losing the second pistol on Ancient. Is the same going to happen? It's the same score. It could be a mirror situation. What do you reckon, Hawker? Yeah, it could be. I mean, the pistol has got to come through, let's be real. And, and it hasn't so far for EG, but maybe if they get the pistol, that's their way into this game. They need to really keep that mouse economy down here on the CT side. It's Torji this time with the dualies. See if he can deliver for Mouse. Does EG have a good amount of utility here. And they look like they're going to group up on Banana. See if they can get Exertion out of there early. Oh, that'll do the trick. Nice shot from Junior. Now they can accelerate onto B. 
That's a game changer. He has been the thorn in their side on multiple occasions. There is the well flash, more or less. A great pop from Frozen spots the bomb, but they're still losing players. This could be the round for EG, or could it? Three on three. Bombs planted. Should we not concerned with that? For his team to take position, George and Torji are lurking. But who's going to check deeper for whom? Torji, does he check all the way to the right hand side? He does. But the Julies will betray him as well. And there were two. No kit for these CTs. Moving in now as they realize there is a crossfire. Hex is dealt with. Looking for that trade fragger. Junior and new box has a nice pop and a jumping shoey. And it is Yimfat now in a 1v1. Is there time to find this kill and defuse the bomb? Chasing that frag as Junior threatens to go around the corner. I don't think he's got it. There isn't time. They've done the job and finally won a pistol. Well, that's the start they needed. Just buying enough time at the end there. Good round from Junior as well. Getting that initial entry to really help them get onto the B site in the first place. E250, so satisfying when you have shots like that. There was a gap in this smoke which made things awkward. Shuhei emerges, brings it into a close position. George with a big lurk helping out. And they just buy enough time. Yimpat can't get the round even with the kills at the end. So EG with that much needed pistol. Now they've got to make sure they can deal with this full spy coming out from Mouse. Bring up the wall of B. Frozen has much work to do. Time elite. What is the response from Miles? They are somewhat static at present. Could send it towards the B bomb site to try and reinforce it. Unless you give EG the impression that there may be more in store for them on B. Are they going to commit to this? Molotovs will encourage them on EG. And Miles will concede position. I like that even Frozen's not going to just stand his ground and fight here. Because the next round will be the same as this one. Unless they are hunted for by these MAC-10s. So There'll be almost a complete reset. Save for the Utah, which has been lost. They'll have two strong chances to try and upset EG. Definitely the way to do it would be fully saving the next round anyway, or at least you won't want to invest into the next round. So why not save for the next round instead? As you pointed out though, if I were EG, I'd consider having a look with these MAC-10s. Try and remove one or two players. Otherwise we could get the uh, rare unicorn round where no one ends up dying. Just thinking about it. Uh, doesn't look like he's going to go for it. So everyone survives. G will take another round win. Mouse will certainly try and do damage in this one instead. Grenade here. Grenade there. Another test for EG. Molotovs are so important in rounds such as these to limit what the force buying CTs can do, especially when you're moving on to a bomb site. Tags like that, though, they can come to haunt you later on. Hex and Junior are alone now, and they've got nothing to show for it. And this is the kind of perfect storm. We see Mao's fully committing to this bomb site with all five players on this occasion. Uh, will they offer the utility of just the one person? Had at least two smokes at the beginning of this round. If EG send it in this time, this might be... These might be the ingredients Miles were looking for to cause some chaos. Hexed on 30, Junior on 35. Maybe give one of these guys a MAC-10. Why is Wolko still holding a MAC-10 of 100 HP? Sure you want to give him a rifle in this situation? See how it plays out then. Walko drops immediately. Hector Jr. 
On the run, still standing for now. Mouse with four players and no one on the A bomb site. That's been spotted by George. X is going to be left in position with a Galil and 30 HP. And this is where I start to get a little worried. Oh boy. It's not even a quick bomb plant. It's taking a little time to get it down. No kit on the CTs though, so that's the upside. So we'll have to get a move on. Early utility deployed. They'll try and just probably swarm together. See if EG can establish those crossfires they'll be looking for. Yeah, this is free. This is a free round for Miles. And they, even if they don't win this round, they could just choose to contain the T's, make them all die. It's, it wouldn't even be about rescuing the rifles. Just about easing the pressure financially as they try to find their first round. A lot of options for them, and they are looking to contain EG force them to spend all their money. This will be very, very costly indeed for EG. Oh, that's perfect from Jim Fat. Gets the kill bonus as well. Junior, the only man to escape. Oh, he barely escapes as well. Two health from the bomb blast. Planted on that far side, so he took quite a bit of damage while in CT. It's a good decision for EG to go back, at least. They got the info with the MAC-10 players, so that worked out for them. Hex hanging around was a little sketchy. But again, his aim looking so strong here on this map. How we get that full buyout from Mouse? There's not that much money in the bank from EG. Big round here for both teams. Hello, that chicken. chicken, bloody hell. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen a peak there. That would have been peak CSGO. Somebody swung with that chicken's invading full percent of his scope watching steel do qualifiers the other day he had a chicken incident on inferno he made it to reddit eg two rounds behind you can see the impact of those losses in that last round and the money they have left Miles are not looking to be as passive towards top mid as EG were. Exertion dropped on Banana will pull Frozen away from A. Yeah, he's been in the corner this entire time as the smoke is deployed. What is there left for him to do? An instant swing from Hex. And this is a fast one from EG. They're not going to allow Mao's time to respond to what they want to do. Or are they? Keep on short. Almost caught up a grenade. The Infat still alive for now, but Shuhei's been lost, as has the Infat. That's quite problematic for Mouse then as Frozen is the only one left. 1v4 made three. Hold on a second. He's made it a 1v2 before the bomb's even planted. He spoke about Frozen. Now we can watch him do his magic. How much more is left in the tank though for this round? 46 HP. A few more to find. Slowly making his way to the site. No kit for him. There might be one nearby. Can't see one though. Towards that graveyard position, has he seen Walko? This will lose him the round at least. He'll make it expensive once again. No kit, no time to pick up that AWP. There is a kit after all. But EG didn't give him the engagements he was looking for. I was hoping he could pick up that AWP. Not happening for him though. Again, made expensive, but EG, they're on the scoreboard. They're winning rounds. Ooh. Lovely flick from Junior. And the acceleration really good here on towards the site. They just got the kill so fast. Mao's playing some fairly exposed angles, hoping the crossfires would pay off. Still so sick to see Frozen land shots like that. And Mao's still have money into this round. So again, the damage could be very relevant. EG continue to have barely any bank behind, and Torji takes the opener this time. Maybe EG not expecting the AWP out in this round after winning the previous. Torji's got it in his hands, and he's already making it sink. How do you deal with adversity, EG? Patience. 
Nows like to be aggressive. They'll wait for that aggression and make it a four on four. Nows will continue though, and they'll have presence towards top banana. That might be important for them going forward. Impala MP9. Can't have an idea as to how close George is, but the footsteps will start to rise now. Might be good for two here. He'll avenge his teammates at the very least, but has he done enough? It's a long road to rotation. Long road of rotation for Maus from that B bomb site, but it's a two on two, and Frozen has a kit, so surely it's game on for the squad. AWP, though, in the hands of Junior, could be a problem. The smokes are going, but there is one for Frozen. See if there are any shenanigans to be had. Just showing a bit of elbow, a bit of shoulder, trying to create some space for the squad to approach the site. Down goes Frozen. That's the defuse kit gone and very far away from exertion. That neutralizes the round for Maus and EG will tie the score. And Maus just keep on trying to break through. They know that EG have the lowest possible losing bonus. They'd only get $1,400 each if they lose the round EG. So Maus feel like at any moment, if they just scrape a round win, it could turn into more than that. It's not come through right now. It's not quite happened for them. They have to take a timeout to decide if they want to keep buying. It's that good start from Torji. Impact from above, delivering with that MP9, but Junior had a, a pretty solid round here. This was the play. Big risk taken to there. Just go over the top of that smoke. It works out for him after he got that earlier trade. Cyclone again, pretty expressive here as he talks to the team. I think at this point, Maus may just decide to go for that half bite. I've got that ult for Torji, and they could very well still do damage if they bought pistols into this round. So even though it's tempting to keep forcing, keep trying to put that EG economy down, at some point, I think you've got to just say, okay, we tried, we really tried to break through. It didn't happen. We lost the first five rounds in this half now. Let's just half buy and let's try and get a proper full gun round going. Rough spot for Maus. And again, we go back to the narrative we made for EG in that first map. They're delivering in the second. They could win their opponents, picked up the even better. Safety in numbers. The impact creeping around that smoke. Has he done enough damage though? George is in trouble. Down to one HP. Oh, exertion. He was expecting with that CZ. The shrapnel was enough. Risk do you involve then to go for this AWP? A rare miss from Junior makes it very, very doable. Now they'll be wondering about Torji's position, but George with one HP would go down very quickly to Frozen if he can find the angle. Both stuck in the corner, playing a bait setup. George, the sacrificial lamb. That clock is ticking though. Is there a kit for them? Automatic to go down first, but that neither of them have a kit. Is there time for this defuse? I think there just might be. Torji's running from the for the hills just in case. Or oh, it's going to be a close one. Oh, that's so close, but they have secured it. Oh, of course, it's the round they don't fully buy where they finally break through and potentially break that EG economy. This was chaos on the bomb site. I thought Shuhei missing his mark might be a problem, but get Impact doing good work. And Torji, with that AWP, able to get involved. As you said, that missed AWP shot from Junior. Really brutal there. And Mal's instantly celebrated. They knew straight away. There you go. EG's buy is limited. It's only Galil's and a dig in this round. This is a chance for Mal's to try and pull away with this. And that nade looks good. Oh, good damage. That's very good. That's juicy. Poison it. Well... Miles were looking to take this game by the reins at this point onwards. They do like their momentum. However, momentum has carried a third player towards that B bomb site. They've lost position on long. Can they get a smoke towards library in time, EG, to keep this one moving quick? Shuhei and Yimfat could be in trouble as they are getting wrapped upon. 
just as they did with a CT in the pit. He will be pinched, but they're delivering so far. Shoei is, deli is buying time for his squad. He is dancing. He keeps moving and he keeps delivering also. He's allowing his team to get closer. 1v2 for Junior, planting the bomb of a Deagle. A rough round for EG. One that could be salvageable. Left the site. Frozen waits. He is patient. They both have kits. There isn't too much urgency. That's a great one dig from Junior though. Looking for a second on exertion, but not quite getting there. A pricey round, but a successful one for Maus. Exertion loves that little finger wag whenever he wins a clutch. Every time saying, not today, Junior. Despite his best efforts with that one dig into top mid, did the right thing by isolating those angles, isolating those fights. Not enough win the round for EG despite their weakened weapons. Effort from Junior. Can't complain about the attempt. But low on health at the end. Exertion with the body shot secures it. And EG, at least with the bomb plant, decide to force again. But this time it's mainly Mac 10s. This could be rough for EG. If they don't get the bomb down now, they're going to be in real trouble on this map. Safety in numbers, Mandem, Roadmen, Departments, Home Invasion by EG. Virginia Infant has got something to say about that, or do they? Oh, things are getting awkward now, but Shuhei will deliver to you at the very least. EG are not done with this. They're not going to allow that momentum for Mal's. They have used their numbers, and they have position now. This has been expensive for Mal's. They don't have the money to survive a loss here. They also don't have the money to lose these, what little they have remaining. These two M4s will have to be held for the next round. EG are being scrappy. They've got little money either. Closing down on Mal's once again as they move to 11. Yeah, this really feels like a pure scrap between these teams now, seriously. I mean, EG forced back with the Mac 10s. And it looked like Maus had all the info they needed. They cleared out Banana completely. They should have known to be ready for a quick pop out towards A. Yet, Shuhei gets a couple of kills, but it, it's nowhere near enough from the rest of the squad. No one else on that A site able to get any kills between them. So another timeout forced out of Maus because this game is just swinging massively. It, it, with every round one, it feels like it could be the round that makes it a big difference. See for Maus and those economy issues be coming into play here. It would be poetic if EG made a good comeback attempt on their own pick. Lost their map took Mouses to take it to a third. But there's plenty of play remaining on Inferno. And Mouse have mustered a buy. Somehow, they've pulled out a fairly reasonable buy alongside what they saved. EG, one round behind. I'll be feeling confident, especially of their comeback attempt on the first map. On it being retaken by Maus as we speak. So again, these A players should be prepared. Ace last time was too much to handle though. And Yimpak goes down early. The MP9 dealt with. A back from Shuhei works though. He's got another double, but it's Torji on the site. And how much can he do? It's a good angle for the first. What more is there to do though? Automatic runs him down. It'll be a 2v2 and Frozen's forcing it. Or maybe not, oh. he decides against it. He was so close, like he might have had something there if he went all the way, but how could he know? Again, those chain flashes from EG, giving them success. They don't care about that retake on Banana. They will just send it into the A bomb site and use those numbers and those chain flashes, but there's still more to do. Two versus two, so awkward for Junior. Shotgun mode with the AWP. Just looking, but Automatic will find them 
both Frozen and Exertion. I'm trying to wonder where those remaining T's were. EG have tied the score. They've broken mouths again. Wonderful stuff. And again, those, those chain flashes from George come to rise. Beautiful fashion. Is there a third map in this series? It's time, it's time to start asking that question. Yeah, it looks like it's a chance at uh, this rate. Owls had such a lead heading into this second half. They were 10-5 up. They lost the pistol. They tried to force their way through to breaking EG's economy. It didn't really happen. And Mouse themselves do something with the pistols. Double nade combo down banana. First one goes wide. Second one wasn't even thrown by Frozen. Thrown just now. Again, no damage. Really dicey here from Mouse. Try and compete for Banana and stack A in this round. Honestly, as you said, flash assists and trades have been pretty good for EG. Automatic there with a big double kill. So those two players lined up for him in the previous. This one. Let's look to take initiative into top mid. The timing looks good for them. Very good indeed. That's enough of the CZ. Good info also. Those the intentions of EG and Maus have got the stack in the right position. Although the bomb's moving away, but Hex may be the next victim. And Eagle not quite getting there for Frozen, but will eventually, just in the nick of time. Good thing there were two grenades. Smoke grenades there for B. No one in CT, but uh, that could have slowed them down. We can see Mauser moving very quickly up for Nana as Junior will spot him on the right hand side, but Shuhei is here to trade. He'll keep the numbers close. There's an orb to be picked up. This is not ideal for EG. Frozen could collect this. The rolling of the MAC-10 though, and the Desert Eagle. Might be the... Oh, what? Okay, that's huge from Frozen, leaving Walker with a very tight angle. And to find, and they'll spread and deliver. Mouse do it the hard way, as they often have, as they often do, and take the lead once more. Frozen finding some of these ridiculous impact rounds with multi-kills, where it feels like there's no chance for Mouse. He's been winning clutches. He's been winning crazy rounds for his team. Got to see that deep shot again. Felt like the player was in cover. Was it just uh, that tiny gap? Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh my. Whoa. What do you say about that if you're automatic? You're mad. That's, that is unbelievable. <laughs> what a way to clutch, man. Frozen is the man when it comes to Mouse. He is the man. Juhei was a big signing for the squad. He had his name value already, but Frozen is that guy when it comes to Mouse. And that is undefeated, undisputed. Puts Mouse back in the lead once more with sheer confidence and will. I mean, it's still a tight game is the crazy thing. Uh, EG, again, have to go down to few weaker weapons. Again, their loss bonus isn't great. But honestly, we've seen pistol rounds being won by teams. So I don't know if that massively matters here. Let's see if Mouse can try and have some stability off the back of that round win. So far, the three CT rounds that Mouse have won have all come from defuses. Frozen just took big A damage there at top banana. Banana was taken, but the spam exertion means he's blind. He's not got help. Now Frozen is going to need assistance on this B site. Gang violence is on the way. Do they have the flashes to go through this? They have the time to not. EG. They are close though, boosting up and Frozen will find both of them so quickly as well. Coming to life, the deeper we get into this game. 20 frags for Frozen, refuses to lose. 20 for Yimfad as well. He's also been nasty. Hexto leads with 21, and maybe there's more work for him in this round. 45 seconds on the clock for EG as they creep towards A. No noise being made. So no warning system for Mal's right now. They just go entirely dry. 
Who's watching short? That needs to be the question. This setup looks good. The molly down, the smoke front sight that Yimpa isolated. Shuhei could still deliver the goods though. He's got one. He's stalling on the bomb site. Trying to buy time for the rotate, but he's tagged down low. Still haven't got the site control they need, EG. 13 seconds, Junior emerges above. But the bomb plant could be in trouble here. They push the site. No bomb plant, but both kills for Hexed. EG find a way to win the round. Talk about down to the wire. He came off that bomb. I thought they were done for, but Hex delivers two more. Pops off at the end of the round as well. They are feeling themselves. And these are the kind of wins they need. The scrappy wins, the wins where you've got to dig deep and have that individual performance. That's how you gain confidence in your team. And they've needed that for so long. As a unit, as an organization, EG. Huge round from Hext. Topping the table, extending that lead now to 23. They've got clutch as well, say EG. I was looking to answer back immediately. Aggression in the apartments from Torji. A classic setup with the rifle support as well. Free fire from George. MP9 waiting. Both could allow him to fall back. 13 rounds for both teams. Jeez. I'd love to meet someone who's confident about who's going to win this map. Because it just feels like it could be either team based on which individual step up at any moment. In that last round, felt like Frozen made the round winning play. Hext comes back with one of his own. EG might return to where they found success on this A-bomb site. Stack from Mouse though. This could be tough to overcome. He's sending it right. Traffic jam. Only the one frag though for Yimfat, and that's going to be fine for EG. Torji's in a very awkward position, but that doesn't mean he won't deliver. He will. X has taken pit in the meantime, but they're swinging from the CTs on long. It'll be a quickly developing round as Junior starts to post up. But look at these angles. They're awkward for everybody. He's so fast though, Torji. That leaves a bomb upstairs that has to be rescued and planted. X is still delivering though. Now he's alone. Last one to fall. Mao's in the lead. 14 to 30. No bomb plant for EG. Even if they did, their money would still suck. Yeah, their money's going to be real bad, as you said, with that lack of bomb plant. But honestly, they've been able to pull rounds off previously, so don't count them out. I'm sure they will force. Torji just able to survive for so long with that AWP, though. I thought he was going to get run down at some point, but playing behind that little hay cut. Ends up getting so much done. Ends up stalling for way too long there. EG can't get the sight. And what is the call here with the MAC-10s, with the pistols? Could it be a fast round? They're all grouped up early. I have to assume that Mao's are going to be ready for the fast-paced round in this one. Go command. Hot flash comes through from automatic. Torji falls back to the site. Still standing. Re-peaking. That may have been a mistake on this occasion. Mac 10 good enough for the job. Hex goes flying. Yimfat falling back and delivering. They move into a sandwich. So they've been made the meat, EG. Mouse moves to 15. No bomb plot again. And this may be the end of the line for EG. A little relief there from Frozen. So that first kill goes against Torji. You are a little concerned. He went for this re-peak, but the crossfire on the site was well established. That smoke down means Shuhei can just focus that left side. The impact, again, has had a really good map here. He's been the star man for Mouse. It's great to see from the new addition. Can EG pull it off with the pistols this time then? They've got to do it to stay in this series. Smoke down, they'll try and exploit that onto Banana. Exertion committed up close, but big damage done by the Util. The flash is on point, and Exertion's got too early. All the fire of Flame Comet. Dormammu is here on Banana. 5 on 2, match point Mao's very strong position. They don't let situations like this slide often. 
even with added depth and nuance for EG. This is asking a hell of a lot of a team with no primary weapons and only three players versus a fully loaded mouse. When you find out where the AWP is in situations such as that, it can really ruin your day. 180 from Torji delivering a perfect frag towards the end as Maus take a tough series versus EG. A scrappy series between these two, but Maus do take it 2-0. Both maps were close. It was hard fought. It's Maus who move on in this mid bracket. That means EG will have to go down to that lower bracket, but EG have played a lot of close maps here. Even if they haven't got a map win so far, They've showed promise. As for Mal's, a much needed bounce back from them. It wasn't clean, it wasn't pretty, but it's a win. And sometimes in the group stage, that is all you need. How often can you say you've really enjoyed an Evil Geniuses game in the last X amount of months? Not very often, at least if you ask me, but that one was awesome. We saw some great strides. We saw some promise. We saw some potential from this team, finally. We saw growth from the squad, again, working as a unit, taking a fight to a pretty strong team of Mal's on more than one map. That was really, really awesome. They looked like they, they looked like they could win both of those maps, which was uh, really awesome. Let me just pick a team here. Yeah, pick a side, man. Yeah, let me just uh, get back to my oil rig, excuse me. Anyway, um, that, was, that was fantastic work by EG. Even in loss, I think we finally saw some promise from the squad and that's what we've been looking for that's what's been lacking for quite a while i think in the eyes of the viewer but that was an entertaining game they worked as a unit they worked together their chain flashes and their executes winning the unlikely rounds there's a lot of things that went well for eg even in defeats there yeah they turned uh, that second map into a real scrap uh, and that's honestly what they needed to do i think uh, on mouse's pick of inferno they needed to make it chaotic so I can't complain at that. They they almost baited Maus into those constant force buys at the start of the second half, which made the economy game really funky, really interesting, and allowed them to get back into this game because that first half, Maus were, were pretty cut and dry. They were 10-5 up. So again, EG showing some heart, showing some character here, which is a, a good sign. Hext ended as the top fragger in that map as well on the entire server. So more positive signs. I think for Maus, it maybe was just important that they got the win on the board. However the hell they managed to do it. Frozen had to have some big rounds. Torji stepping up towards the end on that orb. It felt like their individuals were what had to come through towards the end there. But I'm glad they did because with the quality of players they have, they really should be making it through this group. And so they could not afford to go down to the lower bracket this early. Yeah, EG will certainly feel like they could have won this series 2-0. And I feel like they could have. There was definitely a opportunity for them to do that. But I have to wonder about the perspective from Maus, because obviously they'll come into this one confidence. They know what they should be with confidence. They know what they should be doing, especially looking at these teams historically. But I think that Pro League is clearly provided a big opportunity for these teams who have to make these strides and have to have this growth. And we have seen now from both MIBR and DG that they've been working hard to put themselves in a stronger position to grow as a team, to move up the ranks. So they've been up against these like new look teams with uh, tighter games and so on. But I do wonder if there's a balance between feeling they didn't play well or respecting that a team they, they were playing have improved since they last encountered them. Yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting one, this group now, because like I really do think We've got a, a couple of the teams we didn't expect that look like they're going to be providing a lot of upset potential. Like MIBR have already shown they can do it. They played Ents really close over on a map on the mainstream, by the way. So MIBR looked like the real deal. EG looked like they are really close to beating teams. And I wouldn't be surprised if they get at least one or two wins here from that lower bracket. So this group actually feels really open and i'm really excited about that i think there definitely could be some surprising teams not making it through from this group and that's always fun i think just seeing these teams come in and you know for, for an eg or an mibr this is kind of the event they're probably most excited for and most building up to these group stages and we're seeing some of that preparation pay off for some of these teams clearly
Yeah, absolutely. Definitely there there has been some hard work done, although EG sadly are running out of opportunities to demonstrate that hard work in that narrow loss to Mouse. But we'll have a look at their position later on. Just waiting for our interview to get set up. And it'll be interesting. I'd like to ask uh, Mouse about yesterday as well. Obviously, in loss, we didn't get to talk to them. So I am quite interested in their two-day perspective. And indeed, I believe we have Shuhei on the line with us to talk about uh, Mouse's recent perspective. So welcome. We didn't get to talk to you guys yesterday. So how about we start with yesterday's match? Because overall, you guys have had two very difficult matches today and yesterday. We saw an MIBR who came into Pro League. Even when we spoke to Kady and he said, look out for these guys, they've been working hard. And that was quite clear on the server as well. So what did, how did you guys feel about the match versus MIBR yesterday and how strong the opponent was? I think they played really well. Uh, they also didn't surprise us because we knew it was going to be a hard game since the beginning. Uh, I also don't think, I also think that we didn't play too bad. Um, yes, there were some rounds we could have won or a few mistakes that happened, but in general, it was a really good game from us as well. And I think it was a good game to watch from a viewer's, per, viewer's perspective. Uh, so I'm also really happy about the performance that we had. Uh, it wasn't the worst game to begin with. Yeah, I, th I think it's easy from the from an average viewer's perspective to look at like, okay, you've got the name value of Mouse, you've got the name value of MIBR, and like, oh, if Mouse don't win, then that means that Mouse didn't do well enough. But I think you, uh, we said it on the commentary as well, like you have to give credit to how hard MIBR were working. Well, we had a close game versus, well, close games versus EG as well. And it looked like that they have found some more synergy for themselves as well. So how, what did you think of your opponent in today's matches? Uh, I think it was also a really tough game for us. Uh, we're still yet to find our groove. Um, they also played well. We also had good preparation coming into the game, so we knew how, what to expect. Uh, but still, they surprised us a lot of rounds. Um, so many rounds got close that shouldn't get close. Uh, in general, it was also a really good game from us, but it's still something that uh, we want to take forward and improve because it shouldn't be uh, looking the way it looks now. I wanted to ask you about Frozen because, funnily enough, some viewers might not be aware. You guys, you're actually the same age as Frozen, but Frozen's just been around so long that you feel like he's almost like a veteran at this point. So even though he's only 21, does that experience sort of shine through on, on this roster now that you're getting the chance to play with him? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, we're all pretty much learning from him, even though he's uh, our age, he's the most experienced. Uh, a lot of things he has brought to us, uh, individuals in the game and outside of the game that uh, are for sure a huge help to us. And we could see the improvements really quick. Uh, he's also a good role model for us uh, that we can just get inspired by. Uh, it's just in general to have a really, uh, really good to have a teammate like that on your team that you could look up to and also learn from. I want to say also, looking at this group overall now, I think a lot of people already thought this group could be close. And now we're seeing some of the uh, the other teams come through as well. So uh, that's got to be like almost a little scary because you look at some of these squads like MIBR, like EG, they look like they're competitive. So uh, what do you think about this group now? Because like it, it really feels like it's actually very open. Yeah, I'll be honest, I don't even know what's ahead of us, so I can't say too much. But uh, I think for every game that we're going to play, um, we're just going to make sure that we come prepared. Uh, obviously, it would be nice to win against uh, really good teams here and show us ourselves. But first, we need to make sure that we come prepared as individuals and as a team. You guys won some very unlikely rounds today, which I think is a credit to the roster you guys have. We saw a bunch of clutches from Frozen, but I just I think generally individually, we saw like lots of multi kills from uh, Yimfa and Key rounds as well. Like when you have a, an, an unlikely situation where you're you're half with pistols, or maybe you've got three or four guys with pistols and so on, and you guys just find a way. Like, is there is there a lot of expectation to? Do you, do you go into that round to like do as much damage as you can or are you like we can win this round like do you is there a lot of communication is there because we saw with MIBR for example versus you yesterday they had big rounds planned when they had just pistols they had boatloads of utility and they would come in with a huge plan for you for you guys it seems to be more about the individual talent to just just to just wreck people 
and win those unlikely rounds, which gives you a, an edge over some teams. So, like, what 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 are those rounds like for you? Are they are they rounds where you're expecting to win them, or like, oh, let's see how it goes? Is it like high pressure, or is it a bit loose for you guys? It's a bit of both. It's something we have been working on uh, in the last weeks, especially on bootcamp and, and previously. Uh, we just want to make sure that actually every round that we play, that we have a little bit of structure in them. And it's just not on, not based on only individuals. Uh, we all know that we have really strong individuals and basically they can also win the round. But we have to remember that we are here as a team and it's a team effort. Um, right now it's not looking uh, the most consistent uh, as we would like to have it. Uh, so it's something we're still working on and trying to avoid that uh, inconsistency factor uh, of just trying to make sure to play together uh, in those rounds and having a plan uh, just like MIVR, like you said, uh, they were a really good uh, example of that. All right, well, thanks for the great matches so far and good luck in the rest of the bracket. Thank you very much. Cheers to Miles and congratulations to them. And again, I, th I think you would say congratulations and comm commiserations, but I, I think it's really nice to see what we did see from EG. Because again, I think it's been quite desolate for a long time, but we saw a lot of promise today. And uh, as somebody who wants to see them rise and do well, I think, I think we saw lots of great things today that people can be happy about, especially people in the North American region who are looking for a team to, to get behind, or more teams to get behind in that region. Yeah, that's the other point, right? They are back to the uh, the full NA lineup, so I'm sure the uh, the NA fans will be fully rooting for them, and I'm sure they'll be uh, excited about what what could be to come for that team. Let's have a look at the bracket then, and see how things are looking at the moment. There are still games going on, but this is how they began in Group B before the dust started moving, before the ground started shaking, and boy did it shake. We can see the situation now. Big have qualified for the playoffs. Congratulations to them. Ents are doing well as well. They had an overtime narrow victory versus an ever dangerous MIBR in the vacuum of this bracket. So definitely want to tune into once you're done with the B stream because MIBR have shown a lot of promise and they continue to do so even versus Ents. The mid bracket though is getting busy now as Heroic find themselves facing Maus, who just beat Evil Geniuses, of course, and Monty await their opponent. Wow, yeah, that is a big game already. Heroic Mouths lose it down to the lower bracket. Uh, there's going to be some uh, some upsets. Like, I think some teams are going to be upset in general, honestly, after this group because it is so stacked. And in that lower bracket, you can see Brewster await Evil Geniuses. A good chance for Evil Geniuses to try and get their first win on the board. But even Rooster themselves played a fairly close series against Monty. So... Rooster kind of meant to be the punching bag of this group in theory, but I don't think that's true at all. I think EG have got to take that game very seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Good luck to Rooster as well, in the sense that I just want them to have the space to show more of what they can do, and hopefully that happens in that series, regardless of who wins. That brings the B stream to a close for today. Head over to the A stream and check out Ents versus MIBR, because that one sounds like it's a banger. We'll see you next time.
Guys, they're stacked on A. I need, I, I need support. Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna flash us long. It's time for the DHL drop. Every week, CSGO talent go head to head to beat the buzzer. You can join them by typing exclamation point DHL drop in the chat. Answer the questions correctly to get added to the global leaderboard. The higher you climb, the closer to earning a prize you are. Some real talk. Some real talk. From my thoughts. Some real talk. Some real talk. Some real talk. From my thoughts. Some real talk. Some real talk. From my thoughts. Some real talk. Some real talk. From my thoughts. Some real talk, some real talk from my thoughts. Some real talk, some real talk from my thoughts. Real talk is what I'm doing with you. Even when I freestyle or write joints down, I'm speaking my mind, you know, bam, me beating around. I'm spitting on another beat, bringing all type of heat. Say it on the mic the same way I say it in the street. I don't need excuses for why I do this. Just put the headphones on and turn up the music. Do damage on the mic, bam, so abusive. Bust the nut and let loose my creative juices. Drop exclusives for DJs and producers. Got some new ish, always in your face like a nuisance. Making movements like the smoke from a Cuban cigar. Before you a star, you a human, brah. The fusion I'm using's amusing. This ain't no illusion. Not causing confusion. Authentic, not mutant. If I lose my groove, I say, man, what you doing? Real, real talk. talk. Real some real talk. talk. Some real talk. From my thoughts. Some real talk. Some real talk. From my thoughts. Some real talk. Some real talk. From my thoughts. Some real talk. Some real talk. For my thoughts. Real talk is what I'm doing with you. Real talk is what I'm doing with you. Real talk is what I'm doing with you. Real talk is what I'm doing with Run. 